Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the opening drive on 101 ESPN in St. Louis, where it's 7 o'clock. Your time check brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler. Brooke Grimsley is here. Danny Mack is here. Matthew Rocchio is here. I'm Randy Carricker. Good morning, kids. How are we doing? Doing good, other than the weather is very kind of sucky. Extreme this morning. It is. It, uh, it's it's far, it's farty far in St. Louis right now. It's farty far. Farty far degrees. Uh, Dan, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. Do you? I'm doing well. And it's breezy outside. Breezy. If you're driving along, if, you got, no. if you're driving a big truck, be careful. That is not a breeze, Randy. That was some violent wind this morning. Yeah. When I was coming in, I thought I was going to get blown away for a second well, there. Let's just go check the traffic. Whoa, 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 it's, it's windy, whoa, 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 let's get this thing down, okay, no traffic from the jet copter today, too, too windy. Yeah, you couldn't get up there, could you? No, no, no it's breezy. It's too, it's too, no, that is not a breeze, Randy, a yeah, breeze windy, is a very yeah. gentle, windy. you know, nice little breeze, <laughs> that is not, what we're experiencing this morning is not a breeze. Wow. Wow. Uh, the Blues lost last night. But let's start with this. The Blues are back in action tomorrow, uh, Thursday night. Uh, they play on the take on the Flames. Is that game meaningful after a two-one overtime loss to the Golden Knights last night at Enterprise Center? At this point, no. Just because you have to be realistic and look at the numbers. There's ten games left for the Blues, and there's eleven for the Golden Knights, and you would basically have to go pretty much perfect for the Blues from here on out, and the Golden Knights would have to completely almost drop off. So, is the game meaningful? Sure, it is. You're still mathematically alive. Mathematically. So mathematically alive, you go down to the rink and you think you have a chance and that's all you want. Now that chance is pretty slim. Ten games to go, as Brooke mentioned, six of the ten at home and uh, basically dropping a point last night. So and the fact is Vegas has had a, uh, got a game in hand, which makes it even tougher here down the stretch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of a bummer. Last night, Vegas attempted 65 shots. The Blues attempted 53 and the Blues didn't even score a goal until late in the game. Here's Jordan Cairo. Another pass. This time too far for Brandon Saad and the Knights are going to get it back. Blues get it ahead. Brings it in. Passes over to Braden Shen to the front of that for Saad. He scores! Brandon Saad! As Shen leaps into his arms! He bangs it home! 1-1 the score! 5 7 to go! Third period! And that sparked the Blues. And really for the first time in the game, they started to get some offensive zone time and they started to get to the net. But man, it took 55 minutes to really start getting to the net on a consistent basis. I thought the third period, they were pretty good. I mean, Buchnevich had a deflection that almost went in. Tory Krug, Braden Shin hit the crossbar. Saad had a great chance outside of his goal. So I thought the third period was pretty good, but just not enough in OT. No. And in OT, Buchnevich had an opportunity with a penalty shot. He was dragged down on a breakaway. He is saved on the penalty shot. And 19 seconds after the penalty shot try... Theodore is going to bring it up over the ice, bring it in on Krug. He fumbled it. Shen gets it. And the Knights are going to recover the puck with the pressure they had around it. And then Krug and Shen battle on there. Gates bring it out. They bring it to the front of the net. Shoot, score! The Vegas Golden Knights will win it in overtime. And send the Blues five points out of a playoff spot. But the Blues got an important one. It is an important one, but it, it's going to be tough for the Blues now. And, man, they had a chance to win. Golden Knights don't have Petro. Uh, the, they don't have Alex Mar- Alec Martinez. They don't have the, yet Tomas Hurdle. And yet they're still able to come in here and come away with a victory on Blues home ice. Well, it is a really good team, even despite mm-hmm. those injuries. And you saw that last night. And for the Blues, they came in with just four points away from the Las Vegas Golden Knights. And you knew it was going to be a huge game for both both sides a playoff game was going to be the feel of it and also could possibly determine the playoffs for the blues and they just weren't able to get it done i guess the best way to describe it is just a crushing loss for the blues i think the effort was there and then wasn't there at times and the other thing is where would they be without jordan bennington and that's the hope that i have with 10 games left is that he can steal you a few games that uh, vegas goes to nashville tonight nashville is able to uh, defeat the golden knights and keep you at least mathematically alive but bennington gives you a shot and 
We'll have to wait and see, but a tough, uh, tough loss in OT last night, no doubt. Meanwhile, the Cardinals played the first of two against the Cubs in Arizona yesterday. Cardinals winning it by a score of six to three. Steven Matz was a starter. He allowed six hits and three runs in four and a third. But then Ryan Fernandez came on with a scoreless inning and uh, two thirds. Matthew Libertor with a scoreless inning. That was important. Riley O'Brien allowed a hit, but he did strike one out in his inning of work. Savanson also pitched a scoreless inning for the Redbirds, who got. Decent offensive performances. Wilson Contreras with a home run, a couple of RBIs against his former team. And the Cardinals with only one spring training game left before they open against the Doyers two days from today. You're kind of bearing the lead. Something else yeah. happened yesterday, Randy. Oh, Dylan Carlson got hurt. That's and the story. Yeah, he had a, a collision with uh, Jordan Walker. And you don't want to collide with a 6'6", 260-pound guy. And uh, a shoulder injury is what the Cardinals are saying for... Uh, Dylan Carlson, it could be myriad things because it looked like there were a lot of things that happened there. The ankle, the wrist, the elbow, it could be a lot of things, but they're saying shoulder right now. My first reaction was that I felt absolutely terrible for Dylan Carlson. And now I know that he exited the game. I was surprised to see that there was a lot of people on social media who were upset that Dylan Carlson exited the game. I think at this point in spring training, you're about to enter the season. You know that Hold he's going to be were your... upset that he exited the game. Dan, he got I'm, smoked. Dan, I'm being dead serious. There was a lot of people who reacted on social media last night that believed that he should have stayed in the game, that it was that he's too soft, that maybe he's made of glass. And I understand that he's had a lot of injuries up until this point, but that what happened yesterday was not something that was completely on him. I, I the thing that I'd be curious about is. Um, if he called for it because it's the center fielder's mm -hmm. ball so if he goes over into the gap and is saying it's mine it's mine it's mine i got it i got it i got it and jordan walker kept coming that that's on jordan walker that's his fault um i would imagine though jordan walker felt like he didn't hear him wasn't called off and if you're not called off you continue to go for the ball back to the social media people uh, they're out of their minds <laughs> because Jordan Walker is 6'6", Randy, as you said, and he's what, 240? 260 now. 260, okay. You get run that hard, and you don't know it's coming. You get blindsided. Things happen. You might get hurt. And by the way, as you mentioned, it's spring training. Get him out of there. He's and, had a great camp, yeah. but get exactly. him out of there. Even if they're both yelling at the top of their lungs, they were both running full speed. So Walker dives, and Carlson goes over him. I'm not so sure that even with them if the if they're yelling i don't know if there's that much time running at full speed to pull up because they they were yeah. both going for it and it's a last second thing where i got it i got yep. it something like that may have happened now if he didn't say anything then that's on him because then you're taught as a right fielder or a left fielder you just keep going until you're called off and i guess the big story then this morning if you're a fan you're saying if indeed that he is going to miss time what direction do the cardinals go in is it siani who's a very good defensive center fielder is it victor scott do you finally say well you've had an injury to tommy edmund Lars newpar dylan carlson hell we're out of guys might as well just bring up victor scott and pull off the band-aid and say let's go so maybe, those are some of the questions that you have yeah and maybe that's where some of the comments are coming from too is that people want to see victor scott the second i want to see victor scott the second but i understand the realistic portion of this of why you have dylan carlson in this situation as your center fielder what happened yesterday was a terrible accident and you could tell afterwards jordan walker really really felt bad we're getting some texts in about maybe dylan carlson's body language towards jordan walker in that moment it, look that is a very scary situation yeah. go to cardinals.com and watch the play you can you can watch the play yeah, they they were looking at each other they were both tracking the ball and jordan walker talked about afterwards with a lot of the reporters that he felt absolutely terrible for the situation and that what you mentioned dan is what he talked about is that i didn't hear them were talked to were ta told to go 100 percent oh is that what he said yeah okay well, I mean, until he's called off, he keeps going. And a lot of times, as Randy mentioned, too, you're right, in the heat of the moment, you keep going and you may not be hearing or even taking a look to your right uh, if you're Jordan Walker. But it's it's unfortunate because Dylan Carlson has had a really good camp and probably made the decision to not bring up Victor Scott a little bit easier because of the kind of camp that he's had. And, and he's dealt with some injuries with his ankle and wrist and back and all these different things and finally looked healthy and to, to get a shot to be an everyday player. So really disappointed for him. Hopefully he'll be able to go on Thursday. They'll, I'm sure the Cardinals will have more news about Dylan Carlson today. Hopefully he'll be able to go on Thursday. And it 
it should just be precautionary. That's why he exited yeah. the game, because you don't want it to be something serious. So here is the quote from Jordan Walker about the collision with Dylan Carlson. He said, either he called me off and I didn't hear it, or we didn't call each other off at all. Obviously, what we've been taught it, with the center fielder, once he calls you off, you stop until then. You were giving 100% effort. That's exactly what I was doing. I was giving 100% effort for it. He, if he called me off, I'm sorry if he didn't hear him because the stadium is really loud if hmm. I didn't hear him. It is a loud, packed stadium. They have 15,000, and the bleachers were jam-packed. So that, that's another part of it. It's kind of like Wrigley. Here's the thing, though. If uh, you break camp with Siani, that was your defensive player that you felt like could come in late-inning situations with a lead, and if he felt like you had defensive liabilities in the outfield, he could cover that. Mm -hmm. Now you're down another guy, and does it pave the way for Victor Scott, or have they just made their decision that no matter what situation is out there, he starts in the minor leagues, and only they know that. Well, and here's the other thing you have to look at. I would think if you're Ollie, you're asking, okay, what if Siani is my center fielder on Thursday and he gets hurt in the first inning? Then who plays center field? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Who could be that guy? Jordan Maybe Walker? Jordan Walker, Brendan Donovan. I'd feel okay with Donovan because yeah. I feel like he's fine playing anywhere. Let's just put it this way. It's not ideal. No. It's no. not ideal whatsoever. And it is amazing when you think about it. The Cardinals open spring training with Tommy Edmond as their number one center fielder. It's unbelievable. Lars Newtbar is their number two center fielder. Dylan Carlson is their number three center fielder. And here they are now working on number four probably. What do you guys think, Victor Scott, if Carlson is going to miss uh, significant time here? And I guess it all depends on when Newpar is going to come back. Right. You can buy yeah. yourself a little time. And he could be back theoretically, I guess, by the opening series here. Yeah. They haven't given a full timetable on him, but it seems like he is at least tracking a little tracking a little bit more forward in his progression rather than Tommy Edmond. And I guess another point to be made here, when's the last time Lars Newpar swung a bat? Does he does he need any rehab? Does he need to get ready? Because he got hurt in the middle of, well, heck, right at the beginning of games in spring training, right? Did he play games in spring training? He did. He so, played just a handful, yeah. though. So I wonder how ready he would be once his ribs are ready to go. I'm with you, Randy. And uh, the minor league system, by the way, will, will not have opened up yet either. Yep. So he's going to have to go to minor league. He's going to have to go to Florida and appear in some of those minor league mm -hmm. games. And then you put him batting first every single inning just to try to get his timing down. But you're right. He's he's going to have to swing the bat against live pitching a little bit before he gets called up to the major leagues. Yeah. So just a quick update. John didn't have MLB.com on Lars Newtbar. Yesterday, he said he took soft swings on Sunday and Monday. So does that mean it's off a tee? Is it soft toss? Is he facing the you know uh, pitching machine? Someone throwing BP? Um, regardless, though, he's swinging the bat, which is a good thing. Yeah. So the Cardinals will wrap up their series with the Cubs today. It's a 2 o'clock start St. Louis time. I believe that one's on MLB Network, if I'm not mistaken. I think yesterday's was shown on Marquee and on MLB Network. I believe they're doing the same thing today. Then a day off, a workout tomorrow at Dodger Stadium. And then they open the series against the Doyers on Thursday at Dodger Stadium. I have not seen, and probably I should know this, who is the opening starter for, is it Glass now? Glass now. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I thought. Yeah, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. <laughs> and the Cardinals countering with Miles Michaelis. Yeah, go Miles. All right. Next up here on 101 ESPN, what, what, what are you laughing about over there, Matthew Rocchio? Oh, nothing. No, just the, the very sincere, the very sincere cheering from Randy Carricker. I'm wearing, my, I'm wearing he's, the colors he's so, today, man. He's so excited for that Miles Michaels start, I can tell. Hey, Miles on opening day, you know, if he performs like he did in his last uh, start for the Cardinals, I'll, I'll take that. Five innings, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take that. I can. It's going to be interesting to see across the board how many of these starters even go five innings? In mm -hmm. all of baseball. That's what I mean. Yeah. Um, they're, they're so cautious with these guys. Mm -hmm. Just let them go. Right. So he's pitching well, let him go. Yeah. He's Max supposed to have built up in spring training anyway. Right. Max Scherzer isn't walking through that door. Remember, <laughs> remember when Max wanted to go seven for his, uh, his first spring training start? Yes. And he did. And they thought you're out of your mind. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. He's not walking through that door. Next up, are the Blues done? That's next on 101 ESPN. The NBA is on ESPN.
Krug and Shen battle on there. Gates bring it out. They bring it to the front of the net. Shoot, score! The Vegas Golden Knights will win it in overtime and send the Blues five points out of a playoff spot, but the Blues got an important one. Yeah, but yeah, no, obviously, yeah, you don't want to come out of the game with, um, you know, being one point uh, less than started, but uh, the reality, um, you know, they have a tough schedule too, and um, we feel good in our locker room right now, and we obviously know we're going to have to get some help along the way, but um, where our game's at right now, um, we feel like we're capable of grabbing uh, two points each night. We're together. Okay, I'm going to go sunshine lollipops on you kids, even though the Blues are five points down with ten games to play. They do have the third easiest schedule remaining in the National Hockey League. Meanwhile, Vegas has to play at Nashville tonight. The Predators have forgotten how to lose. They just don't know. They, they, they might win the Stanley Cup and never lose a game on their way to the Stanley Cup. Then... Vegas has to go to Winnipeg, and Winnipeg is battling for the Central Division crown. Then they have to go to Minnesota, and we saw the other day how difficult it can be to play at Minnesota. Blues had to go to overtime to win that game. Then the Vegas Knights go to Vancouver. Vancouver battling for the top spot in the West. And then finally, or that's a home game for Vegas. Then they have to go on the road for three more at Arizona, at Vancouver, and at Edmonton. So Vegas has a very difficult next seven or eight games. Well, the Blues need to take advantage of what is, by all rights, a lighter schedule for them. So you basically need Vegas to drop off, though, theoretically, right? Mm -hmm. Because they have 85 points with 11 games to play. The Blues are now at 80 points with 10 games to play. And while they do have an easier schedule, the Blues would need to go... Wouldn't they need to go pretty much perfect, maybe one loss at the most, in order for them to catch up with Vegas at that point, points-wise? They need to basically end up with more points than Vegas, if I'm looking at this correctly. You are. Yeah. And they need to get, I would say, roughly 95, 96 to have mm -hmm. a chance. Uh, so here's what you got. You got Calgary left. That's at home on Thursday. Then you have San Jose, and that will be uh, on Saturday. That should be a win. You got Edmonton at home. That's a tough game. Go on the road to take on Nashville. On the road at San Jose, Anaheim, back-to-back. -back. That should be wins. Come home to face Chicago. That should be a win. Tough game with Carolina on a Friday. Wrap up with Seattle at home. That's their final home game. And then the final game of the regular season is on the road against Dallas. So... I, I do think that they can put themselves in a position to make it interesting. It's just, will they be out of it by the final three games, let's say, of the regular season? Mm -hmm. And you need Vegas to tank. Because if Vegas goes 6-5 and five in their remaining 11 games, they go 6-5, and five, they'll finish with 90, let's see, that'll be 12 more points. That'll be 97 points. That's in. You're in. Yeah, exactly. So, and the Blues, to get to 98 would have to win nine of their remaining ten. That's I had two losses. Yeah. And that's not taking into account Vegas playing roughly 500, which I just don't see them doing. No, so mathematically, you're still alive, but it's going to be really tough, really, really tough. It will be for the Blues. But at the same time, as you mentioned, Dan, one thing they have going for him is Jordan Bennington, who has been doing what he's been doing all season, which is stealing away wins for you and keeping you in games. Now... Will the Blues be able to rise to the occasion? I thought it was a really tough, hard-fought game last night. I even thought Vegas was doing a little head-hunting at certain points <laughs> with players, so that was a little dirty on their part, but that's part of the gamemanship of it. But at the same time, I thought that it was a really hard-fought game by the Blues. Brandon Saad has just been electric in the month of March. By the way, the Blues lose Oscar Sundquist, too, yeah. kind of a yes. heart and soul guy, and that means, I, I would assume, Zach Dean gets a chance mm -hmm. here. Nikita Alexandrov would get a chance here down the stretch, depending on the severity of Oscar Sundquist. But I love watching your captain step up for somebody, which we saw last night. Braden Shen, and it's been a tough year at times, and he's moving to the second line, then he's at the top line, and uh, he's there every single night. Um, I love what your captain does i mean if you're trying to find some positives out of the game last night that would be something bennington was outstanding and i thought in the third period they had a chance to bury some of these goals and did not tory krug braden shin hit the crossbar sod had a great chance outside of his goal buchnevich deflection that was so close i mean they had a chance to win this game but going back to the original point of what we're going to talk about 
it's going to be really, really hard for them to make the playoffs. And they needed the two points last night and take away the point from Vegas. Question for you guys going back to the game, because I know that there were some people who were okay with this decision and some who weren't. What did you think about Bannister's decision to go with 11 forwards and seven defensemen? When Sonny got hurt, it didn't look so great. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I of course, it. you can't predict that. I liked it. Get your best players on the ice. Give you yeah. a chance to score and give you a chance to win. I'm okay with that. Yeah, and again, you had to take advantage of a diminished uh, Vegas squad, and I think that roster-wise, he was probably thinking, okay, we, we can do something against this group. And unfortunately, once Sunquist got hurt, then everybody got gassed. And it's, it's amazing to, to think about this whole season. And, Dan, you've talked about that Saturday afternoon game against Nashville. That's, where the, that's the season that's for me. That's the game it right is. there. But the other one is the one that got Berube fired. The, the losing at Columbus, losing at Chicago, uh, before that losing here against Vegas 6-3. to three. Those three games, too, back in November, uh, December, mid-December, uh, the, the ones that got Berube fired. And then if you want to pick a singular game, I'm with you. It's that one game against Nashville where you had a chance to go up six. All of a sudden, you're only up two. And that's where Nashville really hasn't lost since. No, that is 100% the game of the season for the Blues that really defined where things were going to go. They did have a chance, as you mentioned, to go up six points. And instead, you saw the Predators take that momentum forward. And they've just been on a tear ever since then. And you mentioned Brandon Saad, who has been great this month. But I think he's had five goals in his last 10. Yeah. And... I, I I never expected Brandon Saad to be great. As a matter of fact, his overall numbers are going to be relatively close to what I would expect from him for a season. But it sure would be nice to see him not go through the droughts that he goes through and contribute to wins in the middle of the season. I'm uh, I'm going to give you some sunshine and lollipops. Okay? All right. Okay, so I'm looking at uh, the fact that this team has a chance to at least be alive. I They're alive. I mean, yeah. the, the, and... If you go back to, like, I thought this team was dead in the water against the Rangers. The trade deadline had come and gone. They did not make any moves. And all of a sudden, they have a chance to at least be mathematically alive. Now, I know there's some fans that are thinking, man, that's ridiculous. Why be in that spot, at, you know, right now? I, I just didn't expect them to be in the spot of the playoffs, much less having a chance to be mathematically alive. So that's my sunshine and lollipops. I like sunshine and lollipops. <laughs> We're together. It does seem like, and this is an off-season thing, and we'll have plenty of time to discuss this, but can you have a really good NHL team where your leading score doesn't even get to 30 goals? Mm. I th uh, unless you have 10 guys That's the only that way. are scoring yeah. between... 20 and 30 it's really impossible you you need to have more goal production and the blues again last night they they just didn't have enough against vegas and as we mentioned earlier vegas even without their big guys and not their big guys but some of their big guys they put 65 shots on net against the blues and not on net 65 shot attempts and the blues had 53 shot attempts doesn't it feel like that there is multiple kind of streaky scores amongst this group mm -hmm. which i mean of course happens with a season this long but i'm talking about you just seem to not have a lot of guys during that same stretch of where it was all coming together yeah think about who is consistent there really isn't a guy where you say, okay, every four-game quadrant, this guy's getting us a goal. But Robert Thomas has probably been the closest thing to that. Yeah, he's been kind of quiet lately, he though. He has been. Yeah. Jake quiet Neighbors, lately. maybe, recently. Yeah, that's a good yeah. one. Yeah, but they, they really don't have that consistent guy either. And I'm not talking about Brett Hall scoring 86. I'm, I'm just... Those days were fun. They, those were awesome. <laughs> those those days were a lot about. of fun. But if you play 82 games and you have a guy that scores every four... Then you're going to have a 40-goal score. Yeah, uh, and the guy that you're thinking of being that guy is Cairo. You just mm -hmm. wish there was – to me, this is – the whole season has been inconsistent from the drop of the puck of the original game, uh, the first game mm -hmm. of the season. And like I said before, when the Blues went to face the Rangers and they get blown out in that game and looked completely lost – I thought, well, this season's over. And then they come out and play well in Boston, and they play well in certain places, or you know, across the board here down the stretch. And I just thought, you know what? They're, they're going to put themselves in a position to at least get into the playoffs, which they've done. But um, just truly inconsistent this year. And your big players have to step up, and at times they just haven't. And that 
adds to the I think what you're talking about Randy is just do you have that consistency for us every single night and I would say the answer is no outside of Jordan Bennington yep. Jordan Cairo with 25 goals right now 57 points I wonder what he will finish with what do you guys think he will finish with for the season is it realistic for him to get to 30 goals yes yeah, if he yeah he could he could do that heck he had just a hat trick, hat trick the other day, the yeah, other day. Right. so yeah, he's got how many points 57 Mm-hmm. 57, 10 more games, point per game. Let's say a couple of – Matthew's laughing. I'll say he gets to 70 points. What do you think, Matthew? 70 Matthew, points yeah, is Matthew, realistic. Yeah, Matthew checks out. All right, thank you. How many games do they win if he gets to 70 points? Uh, point per game, I'd say minimum half. Let's say that they win six of the 10. Right. Yeah. And we're all Brooke Rimsley tonight, guys. We're all Predators fans. Oh, absolutely. As they go against the yeah. Vegas Golden Knights. Mm, By no. the way, one other note for you. On Thursday night, the Frozen Four begins. And Did you I know see the... what those tickets are going for? No, are they expensive? They're expensive. Oh, here in St. Louis. Yes. Uh, the, the NCAA hockey tournament begins. Of note for us is that at 7.30, the University of Minnesota is going to play, and they'll either be on ESPNU or ESPN+. Plus. So you'll get an opportunity on Thursday night to see Jimmy Snuggerud play against the University of Omaha. I'm That'll looking forward really to that. Exciting. I am too. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll tune in. I'll, I'll... I think it's already sold out from what I was saying. Oh, yeah, here in St. Louis it is. It is. It's, it's already yeah. sold out? It's crazy. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing that Centene Community Eye Center is getting a huge event like that because that's what they were dreaming of when they were putting it together. Yeah. Did, you ever, did you guys ever go to when they were first putting it together and had the vision of what they wanted to do out there in Maryland mm-hmm. Heights? Yeah. Just to see it grow into what it is now. I've been to a concert out there. They host great concerts Who as the well. Concert? Um, the concert was Leon Bridges. Oh, cool. Have you heard of him? Yeah. Great, yeah. great artist. And they had it back where they take out the ice. So intimate setting. It is. But yeah. it was a great setting because they took out the ice. And so then you're in that back area. And it was just really cool. And it's so fun. they have concerts. And now you have these big events, hockey tournaments, all that stuff coming to town. And they take out the ice in the at the outdoor rink, right? Yes. So. For the concert specifically. Because it would be yeah. really chilly, Randy, if they kept that ice there for the concert. Well, and it'd be hard because it's like 95 degrees many of the months right well i think concert. it was march Serious? when i oh, okay. saw him okay. and it was it was kind of cold then maybe that ice rink will start making some money with the frozen for the uh ncaa hockey what are you saying randy town. i'm saying that they aren't making much money Dan. <laughs> right. I, I, oh. I know where you're going with this <laughs> i'm trying to pump the tires up a little bit randy i like that thanks coming up on 101 espn how concerned should we be and how should concerned should the cardinals be about paul goldschmidt's spring that's next on 101 espn
Fenton Barn Grill's Tuesday lunch special is their breathtaking open-faced turkey sandwich with their tender, juicy, well-seasoned turkey. It's extraordinarily well-prepared with fresh and crunchy lettuce, delicious tomatoes, and an absolutely fantastic Texas toast you will love. This lunch special this afternoon at the Fenton Bar and Grill. And if you're just looking for a happy hour this afternoon between noon and five, two and five, they have great drink specials. Appetizers are six bucks. So you can get mini tacos or their Fenton Bar and Grill fried dill pickles, breaded spicy cheese curds that are mm -mm, delicious, plus portobello mushroom strips, pretzel bites, and fried green beans. All of those are only six bucks each at the Fenton Bar and Grill from two to five this afternoon. It's a dazzling place to have a great meal, whether it is lunch happy hour or dinner and you'll love the people there stop by say hi to alicia and kelly and megan and the whole crew and you will love working with them when you stop by tell them randy sent you and uh, you're going to talk some sports with them you're going to have some fun with them and you're just going to have a great meal at the fenton barn grill just find your way to the soccer park and follow rudder road to the fenton barn grill learn more at fentonbarngrill.com and tell them randy sent you This is Rocky with your Sports Center update, driven by Johnny Londoff Chevrolet and Johnny Londoff Autoplex. The Blues last night fall in overtime to the Vegas Golden Knights, two to one. They have now dropped five points back in the Western Conference standings. The Vegas Golden Knights, by the way, have the second half of a back-to-back -to -back tonight as they face off against the Predators. That will even them up with 72 games with the St. Louis Blues. Blues, by the way, back in action on Thursday night as they host the Flames, 7 p.m. puck drop down at Enterprise Center, 6 p.m. pregame show right here on 101 ESPN. And you're home for the St. Louis Blues. And yesterday, the Cardinals over the Cubs 6 to 3. But the big story was the collision in the outfield between Jordan Walker and Dylan Carlson. Still no news yet on a final prognosis for Dylan Carlson. That is your Sports Center update driven by Johnny Londoff. Find your road and shop 24 7 at Londoff.com and LondoffAutoplex.com. Are you kidding me? Goldschmidt was only 5 for 46 for the Cardinals during uh, spring training, at least so far. Had one home run, driven in four. The batting average when you go 5 for 46 is 109. 208 on base, 217 slug, and a 425 OPS. The number is not great. And how much do I care? Not one quit. About not at all. Eh? No, I don't, I'm not, no I, I've seen too many guys have too many bad spring trainings or too many guys have too many great spring trainings to believe what happens in March. Would I be surprised if Paul Goldschmidt went three for four with a home run on Thursday? Not at all. No, because Paul Goldschmidt is the epitome of just being Mr. Consistent. And look, I do understand that it sounds off a little bit of alarm bells when you see somebody go through that big of a slump during spring training. You would hope to see something. And Paul Goldschmidt, he has an interview out right now with the Post-Dispatch where he actually discusses it, and he doesn't make excuses for himself. He even said himself that he was hoping to see more during the second half, and he knows, at least he hopes, that he has figured out what he needs to work on here. This is his least productive spring training since 2014. That's how long Ooh. of a stretch this has been. And then what happened during Paul the regular Goldschmidt. season? Did that lead to this it, regular season? It went season? really well for him, for Paul Goldschmidt in 2014. So that's the part of this where you don't freak out that much with him because of that. Because even when he does go through these little slumps, and he said it through himself, you know, that this is something that happens in baseball, it's something that's happened throughout his career, but his slumps tend to be pretty short, and then he gets back on track. In that 2014 season, it worked out really well for him. You can go back and see he bounced back, and he was able to bat 300 and earn his second of six consecutive NL all-star selection so yeah I would say that he finds a way to get back on track I would guess just playing devil's advocate here does it concern you because of his age he is 36 years old and you start to get in the back of your mind oh are we seeing the decline because age is always undefeated I think it's a fair point for sure I would just say this he did work on some different things with his swing during the offseason I think mm -hmm. he went to driveline if I'm 
I think I'm correct on that. He went to some place to work on his swing, and if it hasn't clicked yet, that would be my only concern because mm-hmm. it's like a pitcher that's working on a new pitch in spring training, and it's not really going all that well, or they're trying to define the pitch that defines them, and it's not going all that well, and by the end of spring, you just hope to be locked in. And that's the thing with him is that you just hope to be locked in. That would be my only concern. I'm with you, Randy. I don't I don't care about the numbers. The guy's an MVP, seven-time All-Star. But if he's working on something that's not clicking yet, that would just give me a little pause for concern. If, if we start the regular season and he goes 11 for 100 and he's hitting 110 or whatever, then that's different. That That is concerning to me. But I've just seen too many guys that uh, – after the first two weeks of the season, we say, oh, remember what the bad spring training we right. had? It happens all the time. <laughs> or teams that win all the games in spring training, and then the first uh, part of the season mm-hmm. starts, and you don't do too well like last year. That I'm going to go familiar. back to what Brooks said. I think she's 100% right. Is When you're 36, that, you know, that in... in Father sp- time. It's, yeah, it's, he's undefeated, and in sports terms, with a decline of last year, that would be a little cause of concern. Now, do I expect him to be like this? In the regular season, no, I don't. But would I expect maybe a downturn of some sort, which would be a downturn for him, still wouldn't be that bad. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me, and it it would make some sense. Even his downturn, it seems like it wouldn't be as bad as what you would see for other athletes. And I think that going to the spring, you hope that he gets back on track. And as I mentioned, I think that everybody should go read that article because he holds himself accountable Mm -hmm. in there. He's not making excuses. He's not saying, oh, this is good, this is fine. No, he's saying, I was expecting more of myself, but hopefully he says to Towards the end there, I'm working on some adjustments that I need to make, and hopefully this will expose that. So he's at least looking at this in the way. And that's where the experience factor could actually benefit him, though, in the other regard, because he has been through this many different times, and he knows how to get himself out of a slump. So there could be a positive in that, too. And I think it's also unreasonable to expect that he's going to perform like he did when he won the MVP in 2022. He's He is two years older than that, but he's still... uh, pretty good player I, I like having him on my team and i wonder if for, for those that say oh you got to trade him as soon as possible who's your alternative who's if he's not your first baseman who is i've been thinking about that who would be the backup to him i know a lot of people want to put jordan walker eventually at first base but he hasn't taken a ground ball probably in a couple of years and there are shots that are hit you hit at you very quickly so i think he'd have to maybe graduate to that with some work on the side and then also spring training maybe to say it's a year off or whatever the case may be who would be that guy would you put brendan donovan over there matt carpenter certainly could play there but uh when he needs a day off that's going to be interesting to see who mm-hmm. they put at first base if it's just a day off wouldn't you think that alec burleson maybe that's would step one. into the role just yeah. because it's temporary even it seems like when he takes the day off it's not for long so you have burley there as an option i think that jordan walker that conversation of him being a first base eventually is very intriguing doesn't that seem like that's the path moving forward for him he was a third baseman and apparently has pretty good hands over the at third and he's big <laughs> yeah you, you can miss some throws plenty target that's yeah. plenty yeah. big yeah and athletic and with uh, chase davis on the way another left-handed hitter the last year's first round draft choice and victor scott on the way i would think that there will be outfielders that would allow you to move walker into first base ultimately i think my gut tells me though they want to keep him in right if they've invested this much time with him in right field, mm-hmm. trying to learn the position, he's got a, a great arm that they think he's going to get better and better and better, which by all accounts, let's exclude yesterday and last mm-hmm. night banging into a center fielder, but by all accounts, he's much better. I, I, I don't think they want to move him just yet or if at all. I think they'd want to keep him in right field just because he's getting better defensively and not that you hide him in right field, but if there's a comfort level with that and then it you know, all of a sudden he's kind of settled in that position. You don't worry too much about it. Maybe Nolan Gorman at first base thought about Mm. that too. Thought about that too. Yeah. It makes some sense. He was a third baseman. He had, uh, he still has pretty good hands. His range isn't great, but he's kind of got a first baseman skill set. So let's just say if it ended today for Paul Goldschmidt in spring training and he is something happens, God forbid, but he gets hurt. Who would be your opening day first base? I think it's a legitimate question. Who would you start at first base? Burleson, wow. to your point, or maybe Carpenter? I mean, it's, I think it's Donovan. Could be Donovan. Uh, and Burleson moves to left. If and then some, you would call him Victor Scott? Well, you, you have to call up somebody, yeah. Or would you go get an outfielder? A more veteran outfielder. I think they've all been, I think Eddie Rosario signed, so I don't know if there's... Is Tommy Pham out there? Pham, there you go. 
314 says, isn't Goldie historically a slow starter? And he is. Yeah. Historically, he's very slow. First couple of weeks, first four weeks sometimes. Yeah. And then he gets going, gets settled in. Seems like when the weather gets warmer, he gets better. So I, I, it's it's interesting. The, the, the spring training he has had is glaring in how poor mm-hmm. it's been. But he's been so good, a seven-time All-Star and MVP, that I don't worry about it. But to your point, Randy, if we're 100 at bats in and he's got 11 hits, yeah, then I think there's a little cause for concern. Yeah. Let, let's the, see how he does early in the season. From the 618, Luke and Baker. Luke. I don't know. Uh, they, they they play him, but I don't know if Lucan is really thought of as an everyday guy by the Cardinals now. I don't think so either. I think they would adjust on the fly. To your point, Brooke, I think, Burleson would be the guy, maybe Matt Carpenter. Um, I think those two would be the ones that you'd look for first before you'd go anywhere else. And by the way, Luke and Baker was awesome at AAA last year. So maybe he, was. maybe he deserves an opportunity. And then, so that is, I'm just thinking about this though. So then could you do Alec Burleson and Matt Carpenter as your first baseman just to maybe hold no, over a little bit? Now we're thinking, now we're I'm cooking saying, with like, gas. I don't know, platooning the situation a little bit. I want to see the outfield metrics with Jordan Walker before I make that move. And if there's not an improvement there, then I'd have to take a hard look yeah. and saying, what's his future? Yeah. Athletically. Yeah. Yeah. Do we need to, yeah. do, do, you know, if you're the Cardinals, do you say that first base is definitely an option? Yeah. I, I think that they need to do that. By the way, let me just make a quick point here. If Luke and Baker and Matt Carpenter are your first baseman, you're in big trouble. You're in some trouble. You are. I think just, you're in some trouble. No, I said Burleson. Did I, did I no, say no, Baker? I'm just, oh, okay. No, I'm you, you said Burleson. But they're kind of redundant players. Burleson's a better version of, of Carpenter. Probably about the same at first base. Burleson, younger, hit 330 in the minors a few years ago. But, uh, yeah, I, I think even if you have Alec Burleson at first and you don't have Paul Goldschmidt, you're in trouble. Man, we're taking this a long way down we the road. Are, we yeah, are. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're thinking, but here's the thing, Dan. We've already seen all this craziness happen with the outfield. Yeah. That it's your mind starts to really go many different places mm-hmm. and some sad and dark places because you have to expect everything at this point. I wasn't expecting them to be down to Siani and Brendan Donovan and Walker as their outfield no options. No kidding. Yeah. No, no kidding. kidding. That on opening day. Didn't that have that on the old bingo card? Nope. Coming up, get your text in to the Air Comfort Service text line 314 399 9646 314. Four three nine nine. Yo ho, yo ho. Take it or leave it. Next on one hundred and one ESPN. <laughs>
keep it. Want to say something? Want to put it out there? If you like it, you can take it. If you don't, set it right back. Get your text in test 314-399-9646 and give us your take it or leave it. Brought to you by Gloria Lou Realty. Visit GloriaHasTheBuyers.com and start packing. That's my final offer. Take it or leave it. Dan, Matthew, and Randy, it's time for Take It or Leave It on 101 ESPN. Yesterday, last night, news broke from Woj at ESPN that Jonte Porter, former Mizzou star uh, for the Toronto in Raptors, quotes? in air quotes, yeah. It was rough. Uh, yeah, it was, but true. Uh, it, you know, true but fair. Uh, so, Jonte, under investigation by the NBA, following multiple instances of betting irregularities over the past several months regarding prop bets, take it or leave it with Jonte, you always bet the under. <laughs> I think he was actually <laughs> betting terrible. the under on himself. Yeah, they were. That is the thing that yeah. was actually happening. How do you, that was, uh, first of all, I'm going to take it. So, and then, second of all, how did he think that he wasn't going to get caught in this situation? It was so obvious so what was happening. DraftKings releases what the biggest money makers are for particular bets. And on two different occasions, <laughs> DraftKings reported in a media release that Porter's prop bets were the number one money maker from a night, a whole night in the NBA. Two games in which he tanked. One, he got poked in the eye, apparently. And the other, he left sick. And uh, both of them, he went dramatically under. And both Knights were the biggest money makers for DraftKings mm. in the entire NBA. That's not good. No, that's not good at all. I mean, that's Otani like in terms of well, scandal. it's not quite yeah scandal. Mm -hmm. You know, not uh, not what you want if that's your sport. That's for sure. I, now we need to look into if there was any bad situations with some prop bets with Shohei Otani. Is that where they're going to start with their oh, investigation? Here's the thing. It, if you're Shohei's lawyers and rep representatives, why would you report this to authorities? If, you, if he really did bet on sports, why would you go to investigative authorities and say, here's what happened? Mm -hmm. Would you? Because that seems to invite it investigation does. into what you're doing, doesn't it? I guess they're feeling like, hey, we got out in front of it and saying that our man did not do this. Yeah. You know? That's yeah. the right thing to do. So take it or leave it, guys. Uh, as we know, there are a lot of former Cardinals out there who are doing well. I don't know if you guys have seen what's going around with some of the other spring trainings. Tyler O'Neill doing well. Richie Palacios making the roster mm -hmm. the other day. But Jordan Hicks, have you paid attention to what he's been doing with the Giants yesterday? He pitched five scoreless, struck out 10. Take it or leave it. Out of the most recent exits, I'm talking about last year, who are part of last year's team specifically, he's going to be the most successful this season. I'll take that. I'm going to leave it. I'm going Tyler O'Neill. Oh. He's in a contract year, and amazingly, he's going to stay on the field, fight through those rough injuries that put him on the IL here in St. Louis. And again, amazingly, he's going to find himself on the field and hit 30, 35 home runs, steal you 25, and get a gold glove playing left field for the uh, Boston Red Sox. So that's why I'm going to leave our man uh, Jordan Hicks, although I think he's going to have a good year. Don't you feel like Tyler O'Neill will just find any way to stay completely healthy this season, maybe just to do it in spite in mm -hmm. certain ways? Yeah. Oh, I don't think it's in spite. I think he looks at it and says, I need to uh, stay on the field so I get paid. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's going to be a uh, little rough for Cardinal fans to watch that with some of the outfielders that have left and had really good years and good yeah. in places that aren't St. Louis. All if, right. If, by the way, Jordan Hicks does perform well in as Jordan Montgomery and Henesis Cabrera and several others did last year after leaving the Cardinals, if Hicks goes and performs well for the Giants, does that say something about the Cardinals? pitching coaching specifically if he's a starter that's what we're yeah. talking about here mm -hmm. he stays a starter and performs yep. well i think that maybe it it invites that question even more so i think one of the things though you have to look at is that from the beginning of the season when they signed him they committed to him as being a starter mm -hmm. and i i do think that that's important so back off throwing 105 and saying okay we're going to throw 98 99 and it just explodes out of your hand but we're committing to you as a starter which is a little different than when they tried to make him a starter here in st louis there wasn't that full commitment and by doing that i think you train a little bit differently and that's why he's had maybe success 
early on in spring. By we'll the way, see. in spring training, Jack Flaherty, 26 strikeouts in 18 and a third. Interesting. Oh. Uh, take it or leave it that uh, Caitlin Clark, Caitlin Clark, I don't care if you're talking men's basketball, women's basketball right now with both tournaments going on. She clearly is the face of college basketball in our country. Oh, that's great. And I'll take that. I'm going to take it. And you know, Ori, I'm going to watch your sport. Come on. Love your page buckles. Great. But she's not the best player in the game right now. She's not. No, I'm 100% with you. I'm going to have to take it, Dan, because she is absolutely everywhere right now. And she's fun to watch. The Just the intensity that she plays with. I feel like there's so many people just talking about the women's tournament in a lot of ways more than the men's. Yeah, and that's where I'm going with this. In a way, it's kind of an indictment on the men's tournament that, and I know some of the, the faces, I know of some of the names, but... I didn't know where they transferred. I didn't know that they had an extra year of eligibility because of COVID. I, all these different things that have happened because of COVID in a medical red shirt. Now he's in his 10th year. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know some of these things as I was watching the men's tournament. But I know that if I turn on an Iowa game or women's basketball, she is going to be there. And I'm intrigued and I'm going to watch. And to your point, there are numerous ads, like State Farm ads, where there are, are men's college basketball players. I don't know who they are. No. But when she's on a State Farm commercial, I know who Caitlin Clark is. Mm-hmm. Know the kid from North Carolina because he played in the national championship Armando game. Armando Baycott. Yep, like him. Um, He's got a commercial. He does, and I I, I can't remember what it is. He's got a sweet name. Here's the thing. I wouldn't remember his name if it was Sean May. No, sure. <laughs> but I, I just recognize Caitlin Clark more so than I do the men's guys. And to your point, Randy, because of the commercials, that I've been watching. Mm-hmm. I don't know who some of these guys are. You guys, the the uh, what a pro wants, what a pro needs. Those two college basketball players. I don't even know who they are. Do you guys know those anybody? Are, those are pro. Those are pro players. Oh, who are they? <laughs> yeah. That's that's Chet Holmgren and Shea Gilgis Alexander from the Oklahoma City Thunder. So she's, she's of course, enough, Randy. Both, I think I think at least Chet could still be in college. I think yeah. Shea could be would only be like two years yeah, removed if he played his full year. So Caitlin Clark is more famous than them. Too. <laughs> that, that was amazing, Randy. Right? Yeah. I think that he's right. That he better. is. I yeah, think no, she, is right. she is more recognizable than NBA, some of the NBA guys. <laughs> she yep. is. All right. I, that's like a guy who's going to finish third in the MVP and the guy who's going to win the rookie of the year. Yeah, they need to get on TV more. <laughs> yeah, they do. Uh, take it or leave it. The Blues playoff fate was decided as soon as the game went to o- overtime. Bannister fumbled the decision to not pull Binner. You need the W in regulation to have a realistic uh, chance. Leave it. Yeah, Got to at right. least get the point to stay alive. Yes. Yeah. Leave it. 100% because of that. Easy peasy. Yep. Yeah. And if you pull Binner and you lose, you don't get any points. Get out dumb. De- like, let's fast forward. <laughs> That's good math, Randy. You're let's right. Fast yeah. forward 10 games. Let's say Las Vegas drops well, they four. Take the point away. Oh, yeah. If you lose in overtime, you don't get the point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let, let, if you, let's fast forward 10 games. If you, Let's say like Vegas drops four and you lose the playoff spot by one oh, point. Yeah, be- How bad would that exactly. look? Or I don't know what the tiebreakers are off the top of my head, but if you tie Vegas and lose the spot, to a tiebreaker because you're tied with them and instead of one point up, oh, you'd look so dumb. Banny, that would, or uh, Matthew, that would be Banny fumbling a playoff spot. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> take it or leave it. Gorman and Walker are the one two punches with Goldschmidt and Arenado as the sidekicks. Agreed. Take it. Yep. What? As the sidekick. No, yeah, I'm going to leave that. 70, leave home that. Runs. 70 home runs from the kids this year. You no. might get that. Yeah. You might get 75. I could see Gorman popping 35. I think he's going 40. I could see. Do you I, really? I, yeah. I, I still think that Nolan Arnado is going to be the big part of it. So he's Batman in this situation, and Nolan Gorman can be Robin. That's the sidekick. And who's, who's like... Uh, I can't remember all the characters. I Randy, don't do this to me. You guys got to be either. better at comics to make these. Commissioner Gordon. Who's there you Commissioner go. Gordon? I'm proud of you for pulling that one out, yeah. Randy. But who's uh, who's uh, Batman's butler? Alfred. Oh, uh, yes. Who's Batman's butler? Who's I think it would be Carpenter. Oh, oh, good call. Oh, good call. Oh. Sage, no, it's fair. veteran it's, advice. That's, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. But Alfred saves Batman's life all the time. Take it or leave it. NATO requests, uh, NATO requests a trade by is. All-Star break. That would be Nato. Nato, I guess. I, yeah, it's weird Nato. when I, I yeah, it's our Nato, but it's uh, weird to say it's weird to say Nato. Okay. Nato. Uh, Nato would request. Yeah, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'll take it. I'm gonna leave that. I think he finishes his uh, career as a St. Louis Cardinal. You're gonna take it, Randy? Yeah, for fun. Oh, I was like, I was like, do you have some <laughs> thoughts behind no, that just totally. that you want to share with the class? <laughs> yeah. Well, we know he doesn't like losing, right? He should be proved that in Colorado. And what did he do when they lost in Colorado? Hmm. 
I'm going to have to leave it because, I mean, he's getting everything that he's asking for pretty much right now. Unless he's asking for another front of the line pitcher, then he didn't get that. But he at least got one. He did get Matt Carpenter. So it seems like he is getting the things True. that he wants here in St. Louis. By the way, Alfred Pennyworth is Batman's butler. So who's Alfred Pennyworth? We said it was Mark. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I would say with Arnado, by the way, it takes two to tangle. So you got a lot of money left on that contract. He's mm-hmm. going to be 33, 34 mm-hmm. in, uh, I think, in April. So which teams would be the teams that would want him and which teams would he veto the no mm-hmm. trade clause to? So just go ahead and look at the production at third base by the Dodgers, and then maybe that'll give you the, the answer that you want. Mm-hmm. That would be the team. The team. Yeah. And that's Muncie who just signed a new two-year deal. Yep. Uh, take it or leave it. The fighter in the fight is really hoping for some recent NBA trivia today. <laughs> <laughs> take it. Yeah. For some recent NBA <laughs> trivia. Let's think yeah. about this, Randy. So we, we need to have a video, uh, a video fight, yes. So uh, this is all due respect, of course. Yeah. When you say all due respect, that means really anything. You can say whatever you want, Dan. Exactly. Really, no doubt. I think we need to have a fight with NASCAR. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. WNBA. Love the WNBA. And recent NBA action to maybe get oh, you off your throne. I good. Hey, can you believe, by the way, that the 7, 8, 9, and 10 right now in the Western Conference NBA are Dallas, Phoenix, Lakers, Warriors? Those are the play in teams. Who would have thought those would be the playoff play in teams? I don't want to face Golden State. With their know. pedigree and, and having been there, done it, I yeah. don't know if I want to face them. I, I, I wonder if they've just been playing possum. They Maybe so. Maybe so. I hate it when possums sleep on the street. Why, <laughs> why do they do that? Why, that seems that's, dangerous to that's me. That's their tactic to survive, which is kind of a weird tactic if you think about it. Kind they should is. have evolved from that by now. Yeah, but they're, they're not sleeping on the street, Randy. They're playing possum. They're playing possum. They're, oh. about their, they're just in the middle of their day. Okay. They I mean, just, they're flat, they Randy. Uh-huh. That means they probably didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> they're flat on the street. And that's you, that's a little different possum. What are you telling me, Dan? <laughs> that maybe uh, your truck rolled right over them. I don't want to hear this. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> I do get sad Peter, when I see Peter Possum roadkill. Does anybody else get sad when you see that? I get hungry. Oh, <laughs> Randy, no, Mm-mm. no, 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 no. Come no. on, I live in Missouri. No, no, no. no. <laughs> okay. Have you have you had deer meat before? Never. Really? Delicious. I, I, might, I might have had venison oh, chili. Venison, yeah, yeah, yeah. Venison's but, awesome. I, one bite and then it, you, you've never had possum soup <laughs> <laughs> I didn't grow up in Tennessee no <laughs> why am I getting all these shots squirrel this you have squirrel <laughs> no, no. They, they sell frozen rabbit at the grocery stores here in town what Do about really? squirrel never had it okay is there much squirrel meat there is there not is a lot it? I feel like I, yeah I feel like it wouldn't be worth it at that point yeah, I agree how about frog legs I have had a frog leg in the past, and again, not enough meat. I need food. Well, you can get as many as you want. Do you guys think crab legs are worth it? Like, what was Jameis Winston thinking? (laughs) Because there's not... Is what you get out of a crab leg worth it? Is is the taste... Oh, 100%. I love crab legs. But there's not much to it. But what do we remember what kind of crab legs he was stealing? Because there is a difference in certain type of crab legs. King crab? Yes, we're getting a lot of meat, and it's 100% worth it. Okay. I wonder if it tasted different. I have a controversial opinion. I prefer crab over lobster. Doesn't it... Don't you appreciate it after watching... um, 100%. What's the uh, show where they... It's the same show every, every time. Getting the crabs... Or the crab. The crab. That's, that's the St. Louis thing. <laughs> Deadliest catch. Deadliest catch. Oh, Love yeah. Deadliest catch. But also, it, it really is kind of scary at times, though, when you watch that show. Brooke, I have found that they have been on the air, I think, 14 years, and every show is the same. Everyone <laughs> might be but a guy slip watching. on deck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they go to a certain spot. They're not getting crab legs. They need to ma- uh, fill their quota. <laughs> comes down to the wire and somehow they do every single time <laughs> somehow they make it 14 years of the same show and i love it <laughs> i love that show anyways uh, so Jameis not only stole crab legs but he stole crawfish too but i don't have details he's gonna have to... a good old-fashioned crawfish boil huh? yeah i guess so clam bake a clam yeah. bake if you will sure yes. i sure. once ordered turtle soup actually better than crab oh, itself turtle soup is great Really? So no, you I haven't eat had a turtle that. and you won't eat uh, crab legs or what? 
I just don't like crab legs. Okay. You don't like crab legs? You know, turn me on to turtle soup was Mike Shannon. Did he really? Yeah, in Philly one time. What does it taste like? It's unique, but it was spectacular. It was hmm. really good. Is it chunky? Yeah, it was. It, the, the meat's chunky, it was, but it was really good. I loved it, and I would have never ordered it. Mike, you got to try this. <laughs> you got to try this, big boy. You, you, you've been there, right? <laughs> oh yeah. You just say okay. <laughs> yep, yep. Sounds good. It was fabulous. It was fabulous. Uh, thank you very much for your text. We do appreciate them coming up. Shohei says, "I never bet on baseball." It's next on 101 ESPN. Hey, if you're going to do Easter at home, get everything you need at Schnooks and download the Schnooks Rewards app before you go. But if you're going to make a potato dish, they've got great deals this week on potatoes. You can always head over there for all of the eggs you need. And eggs are priced in St. Louis better than most of the country, so take advantage of that. But great deals on all of their produce. Asparagus is absolutely delicious. And if you want to get some of that boar's head ham or turkey over at Schnooks, you can do that. And it makes it easy. Just pick it up, order it ahead of time, pick it up on Saturday. It'll already be sliced. You'll be able to put it out and then be able to have uh, some left over for delicious ham sandwiches as well. With the Snooks Rewards app, you get 2% back on every single purchase you make. All you need to do is download and then shop and earn and redeem. And not only do you get points for money off, but Snooks Rewards also has a lot of other features designed to make your grocery shopping easier. One of those that I love is that when you put your list together in the Snooks Rewards app, it actually guides you through the store. So take advantage of everything they're offering you with Schnooks Rewards and get ready for your Easter feast with everything starting today at Schnooks. So I never bet on baseball or any other sports or never have asked somebody to do it on my behalf. 
uh, and I have never uh, went through a bookmaker uh, to bet on sports. Up until a couple of days ago, I didn't know that this was happening. Um, just to kind of just go over the result, uh, in conclusion, uh, Ipe has been stealing money from my account and has told lies. That is Shohei Otani's new interpreter, Will Ayrton. He was interpreting for Shohei yesterday when he held a 12-minute press conference, didn't take any questions, and said pretty vehemently that he's never bet on baseball. He never paid for somebody to bet on sports for him, says he doesn't bet on sports at all, and really laid everything at the feet of Ippy Mizuhara. Uh, Mizuhara is his former interpreter. There's been a lot of speculation, a lot of people trying to come up with uh, scandalous ideas as to how everything happened and why uh, this occurred. And a lot of people saying, oh, he would have known. Dan, you've been around a lot of athletes. I've been around a lot of athletes. It's not out of the realm of possibility that uh, when Shohei Otani gets an email that his bank statement is available to him, it's not out of the realm of possibility that he doesn't open it. I, I agree. I, that would have been my number one question is, how did the interpreter have access to your bank accounts? Uh, that's all I would ask. Uh, these guys I remember Chris Duncan saying that he, he didn't know. He, he had a money person, and if you trust somebody, give them access to your account, you, know, you say, okay, you just take care of the bills for me. Because that's what athletes do. They got somebody to take care of the bills for them. A lot of handlers. Yeah. A lot of people in that uh, you know circle of guys that play sports. I agree. Man, but how does the interpreter have access to $4.5 million? Well, that's the thing. Is Obviously, Shohei wasn't paying attention. No, and I think that this is a story that we will see time and time again because we've seen it time and time again. With pro athletes, there's so many stories out there where they've been taken advantage of by, by financial advisors, by people with business plans. I mean, mm -hmm. family members, friends. This is not the last case of this happening, so I don't think it's out of the realm of possibilities that this is what happened with Shohei Otani. And and now more and more stuff is coming out about Epe and the things that he's lied about, including his own background and resume. I wouldn't be surprised if he lied to Shohei Otani about who he truly was. And the, But you're right, Dan. The big thing is how do you have access? I think with a lot of those athletes, I mean, how did they get into the situation in the first place. A lot of them just focus on their sport and they just pay attention to that. They don't have much of a financial background. I think a lot of athletes really don't look truly that much into their finances because you see this happening over and over again. You had it with John Elway, Vince Young, Mike Tyson. I mean, yeah. all these stories right. go on and Mike on. Mike Tyson where, lost $350 million. Yeah, yeah, it happens a lot, sadly. Even back in the in the 70s, remember the late Bob Forsh, his agent took him in, in mm -hmm. the 70s and Billy Joel basically went broke because his money handlers took his money. So it's it's not just athletes either. It's people that have a lot of money that this happens to. And I would say that Shohei's probably lucky that he only lost four and a half million. So a couple things is how does the interpreter though, he's not handling money. You know what I but mean? Best friend though. Tight, together had basically twenty four seven. And the other part I didn't like about yesterday, I, if you want to nip this in the bud a little bit before everything comes out with some type of investigation, let reporters ask questions. Mm -hmm. I, I felt he needed to address that more than just making a statement. Um, and if reporters had answers to some of the questions that they wanted, then maybe, you know, there's blood in the water and maybe some of those guys and gals back off just a little bit. Maybe. I think yeah. that this is the right way that they're going about this right now. At first, I was really worried that Major League Baseball wouldn't do an investigation. I think that would be a really poor look because regardless of if he did anything or not, you should have a full investigation, not just from the FBI, but also from Major League Baseball, who he's employed by, mm -hmm. to see if there was any involvement because you don't want those questions lingering and looming over you. I also said they need to have a press conference. He did that. Now let's see what comes out of the investigation because it should clear him if he's telling the truth with what he said with his statement yesterday, it should clear him of any wrongdoing and then people can move forward. What would be the question you'd want to ask him? You had one question, you're at the press conference yesterday, mine would have been, how did the interpreter get access to $4.5 million? Yes. I would assume that would be the most prominent question asked. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. I don't know. What else would you want to ask him? That's 100% what I would want to know, because then I'd worry about who else has access to his account. Exactly. And maybe that is just him being a friend and being charitable. And he said, you know, look, your money's my money. You can have access to a lot of things because they were so close for so long. But that would be my number one question is, was that a normal occurrence? And also, how 
did he truly just find out mm -hmm. that he was taking money from him for this reason? Good point here. 636 says there's probably legal proceedings from this, Dan, so his lawyers probably said don't answer questions. I get that, but in the court of public opinion, mm -hmm. if he could answer questions, that's, what, that's to me what I want to hear. I want to hear him answer some of the questions that I have. What about you, Randy? What would you ask him? I would ask him who he likes in Illinois and Iowa State. <laughs> Is that what you're looking at? Really? You would. Okay. Let's say, Randy, say theoretically that he was doing that. Losing four and a half million, you think you would ask him a bet on that? <laughs> Maybe. How do you feel about Tyler Glasnow on, on, on opening night? Yeah. No, I, I think your your question, Dan, is the most important and salient one. How did Ipe Mizuhara get access to Shohei Otani's money? Because he's not a money manager. He's not an agent. He's not somebody who you would ordinarily think has access to the players' funds. So how did it happen that Ipe was doing that? And maybe Ipe, maybe they, they were kind of like, I don't know, maybe they were roommates and Ipe just paid the bills. Maybe it just happened that way. I don't know. There is absolutely no telling, but I think that this is all important to come out of the investigation of the extent of it because everybody wants to know. And then you have Pete Rose. Did you guys see uh, the video that Pete Rose put out the other day that, and I think he was joking for the most part but he he said that if he had an interpreter back then then he would have had basically a fall guy as well and he would be able to get away with this but at the same time i think he might have been joking he a little have bit never looked at the evidence they had against him. <laughs> yeah, they had some pretty pretty and but here's the thing is if they find something like that pete rose s then this becomes a huge giant giant problem because was he betting on games was he betting on games that he was involved in that's where things could really get hairy for this situation Great point here. 417 says, if Otani bet on Korean baseball or Japanese baseball leagues, would he be subject to penalty in Major League Baseball? I don't think he would because it's outside oh. the realm of Major League Baseball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm assuming he could. I don't know. It's a great point. Great it's question. A, yeah, really good question. So maybe that maybe that's where all these guys should be betting. Draft, <laughs> no. Korean draft games. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> the Korean draft. What was the uh, the deaths so. from though? What what were the? Do we know the sports that he was betting on? Not him, Otani, but the in, quote unquote the interpreter. Yeah, they had that. Uh, you know, that's the other thing I'd want to know. They're was, saying that it wasn't any baseball. But yeah, college football though. I think college and, and pro football. College but, basketball. Yeah. So there was a lot there. Somebody said if you had a, a chance to ask a question, maybe just say to break things up. Hey, how's uh, the comeback from Tommy John? You're there in the middle of all these questions. How do you feel after Tommy John surgery? You doing okay? I oh. think that's a good question. Well, yeah. you two know as a veteran inter interviewer that you do the sandwich technique, right? Sure. So the sandwich technique soften was you soften it up with a really easy question, then you have that hard question in the middle, and then you try to win them back in the end with a nice little softball question. And then what if they say in the middle one, no comment, then you got to think quickly on your feet. Okay, <laughs> you got to go back to softballs then here. Then this turns into a BLT sandwich, Dan, and you're going to have another layer <laughs> of hard questions that you have to get through. The other part of this too is that in california betting is illegal right you know that's yeah. another part of Which this too is crazy i did not realize that i i'm not kidding i didn't realize that until this whole saga with shohei otani and this guy uh bowyer the the bookie has been under investigation by the fbi for five years wow so it's, it's a long they're playing a long, long run game in the fbi absolutely they sure are uh that is today's fresh take coming up we're going to talk about the blues with john kelly the tv voice of the blues he's next on 101 espn it's time for a DraftKings at Casino Queen Redbird Report on 101 ESPN. Brooke Grimsley here for your Redbird Report. The Cardinals are dealing with another injured outfielder. Dylan Carlson dealing with a left shoulder injury after exiting Monday's game early after he collided with Jordan Walker in the outfield while trying to catch a fly ball. Carlson landing hard on his left arm. The severity of the injury is yet to be determined, but we will likely give more information today. This now currently leaves the Cardinals with an outfield of Brendan Donovan, Michael Ciani, and Jordan Walker, and Alec Burleson as a possible reserve. The Cardinals did end up beating the Cubs 6-3 and will face them again today. Today, first pitch is at 2.05 with Kyle Gibson on the mound. The Redbird Report is presented by DraftKings at Casino Queen. Play, stay, dine at DraftKings at Casino Queen.
Tuesday morning, I want to tell you about Stewart's American Mortgage. If you're someone who is looking to purchase a home or refinance and you're looking to consolidate some of that ugly credit card debt, maybe you don't know exactly what direction to go in in any of these things, let me make it easy for you. Call Stewie from Stewart's American Mortgage. He will help you every step of the way. If it's a new home you're looking to purchase, he'll get you to the closing table fast. How fast? 10 days. He'll get you the best interest rate possible. He also also has the bagel loan and that can help you out too it's the bagel loan what is that if you borrow 200,000 or more there's no underwriting fees no appraisal fees no title fees no lender fees and no closing cost Stuart is your guy he makes it easy he's been helping our 101 listeners for many years any questions on rates the industry the trends give him a call call him directly he'll pick up or you can text him his personal cell phone 314-324-4440 314-324 224-4440 or you can Google the bagel loan. NMLS number 226715. Talking everything St. Louis Blues as we head into the Blues booth. Presented by Boardwalk Hardwood Floors, a proud partner of your St. Louis Blues. Find your perfect new floor at our four convenient locations and online at BoardwalkHardwood.com. fall in overtime to the Vegas Golden Knights last night at Enterprise Center and of course John Kelly had the call on Valley Sports and JK joins us now as he does every Taco Tuesday here on 101 ESPN. Good morning John how are you doing? Hey how are you? Good kind of a disappointing way to have that finish it would have been nice to have Buchnevich score on the on the penalty shot but uh, there, there didn't seem to be an awful lot of there there for the Blues until the third period either. No, uh, Vegas really did a good job of shutting the Blues down. We, we talked a lot during the broadcast of those uh, are listening, watch the game, but Vegas is a big team. Uh, their defense alone averages about 6'3", 215. Uh, they have no defenseman smaller than 6'2". So uh, it was a challenge for the Blues to get to the inside in the first couple of periods. Um, in the third period, they, they got to their game. Um, they outplayed Vegas, obviously tied the game really could have won it down the stretch. They had some really good chances. And then a golden opportunity, as you said, in overtime on the penalty shot from Bushnevich. And that's such a big swing, Randy. Obviously, if you score that goal, you're only three points back. Instead, now you're five back. So um, a lot of pressure, obviously, on a player. Bushnevich has had some trouble scoring goals lately. He's playing well, picking up a lot of assists. Um, I thought he had a good shot. Um, but Thompson just made a, a good glove save, and then, you know, seconds later they score the winning goal. But um, I think you have to give the Blues high marks for fighting back against a team that is built to win. They're a championship-caliber team, and I think the Blues showed a lot of character coming back and getting a point, but it was certainly disappointing not to get to. I kind of think that if, I, if I'm in the situation where I can go four-on-three or have one shot with a penalty shot, I, I might rather take the four-on-three, John. You know, I, I've thought about that, and I don't disagree. Um, certainly a four-on-three is more advantageous than a five-on-four simply because there are fewer defenders and there's more ice. So, But it's not like you get that option, obviously. So, uh, yeah, you know, you have, the, you have about, I would say, off the top of my head, about a 30% chance of scoring in a penalty shot, maybe 25. And, you know, the Blues' power play is under 20%. So I guess... Um, according to the math and the stats, you're better off taking the penalty shot. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> so, um, and don't forget, 
Jake Neighbors missed on a penalty shot um, against Nashville in that pivotal game um, a couple months ago. So it's it's not easy when you know it's way different than a, than the shootout when there's not the pressure of just one guy shooting. Um, this is a way different animal, I think, with with the penalty shot. JK, we were discussing this earlier, and I want to get your take on this. What did you think of Drew Bannister's decision to go with 11 forwards and seven defensemen? Well, I, I, I like the theory in that you get your top players on the ice more often. And it certainly worked in Minnesota when they cut back to 11 forwards. Bolduc didn't play in the third period. So you're getting the likes of Shen and, and Cairo and, and those people on the ice more. But the risk is what happened last night, is you lose a player. And they lost Sod for half the first period, and then, of course, they lose Sunquist for half the game. So then you're down to 10 forwards. Um, but having said that, they played really well in the third period. So, you know, I don't think it was a case of wear and tear and not having 12 forwards. They played better in the third period. So, in theory... It, it, it's fine, but it is a risk because of those reasons. All right, J.K., putting you on the spot. You ready? I'm ready, Danny. Okay. The chances of the Blues to make the playoffs. We have a lot of folks that listen in because this is the home of the Blues, and we do a lot of Blues coverage. Just how do you feel about the Blues potentially making the playoffs? We know they're mathematically alive, but I want John Kelly's gut feeling. <laughs> what do you think? Well, I think they have a shot, and I think obviously the next week is going to determine. Unfortunately, Dan, as you know, is now they don't control the destiny. They need help. Now, having said that, Vegas has a very tough schedule. Starting last night, they have seven of eight on the road. Um, they're in Nashville tonight. Then they go to Winnipeg in Minnesota. They come home for one, and then they go back out for three more. So they've got to lose some games here. At the same time, the Blues have – six games left against teams not in the playoffs. So they have some winnable games, but they have tough games as well. I mean, next Monday they host Edmonton. Then they have to go to Nashville. So those are two really hard games back-to-back. -back. And then later in the season they have Carolina at home, obviously a very good team. So the bottom line is they need some help. You know, what are the odds? I don't know. I'm not an odds maker. I, I, I really think if they would have won last night and got within two – I think it would have been at least 50-50, and obviously now five back. It's not nearly you know, at 50%. I would say closer to 25%, but 25% is better than nothing, and they have a fighting shot, and they've played really well. So we'll see what happens. But, again, now they need Vegas to lose some games here, or, or L.A. for that matter, um, to lose a lot of games. L.A. won last night against Vancouver, so – um, they're, they're not out of it, but they're going to have to continue to play really well and probably win eight of the remaining games, I would say, eight of ten, and then they get some help from uh, Vegas or L.A. And you have Jordan Bennington, and at any point in time, a goaltender can steal you some games, and I, I'm sure that's part of the thought process for you is that, hey, this combination has a chance to steal you some games and maybe keep you alive. And, and last night's game, Dan, was a prime example. I mean, the score really should have been at least 3 nothing after 2, if not more. Bennington was amazing. Uh, just a sensational game again to keep it one nothing uh, allows you to get back in the game. And, you know, again, Vegas is a really good defensive team. I mentioned on the broadcast last night in their previous game, they held the Columbus Blue Jackets' top line of Goodrow and Jenner and Nylander not only shotless, that, but that line did not have a shot attempt in the game. Uh, that's amazing for a top line not to have an attempt. So that's how good they are. Obviously, the Blues are a way better team than Columbus. But my point is, it's not easy to get on the inside against the Vegas Golden Knights. But you're right. To get back to your point, with Bennington and Joel Hofer, the Blues certainly have a chance to win every single night. Um, but again, I think they have to win 8 of 10 down the stretch. We'll see. John Kelly, thanks so much for the time this morning. We do appreciate it, and we will be tuned in on Thursday night when you take, when the Blues take on the Flames. Okay, thanks for having me, guys. Have a good day. You too. Take care. That's John Kelly, TV Voice of the Blues, here on 101 ESPN. Coming up, we've got the fight. If you would like to participate, just text in 314-399-9646. 314-399-YO-HO! The fight, coming your way next on 101 ESPN.
Okay, so here's a scenario for you, and this happened with my family. Your car gets rear-ended and it's totaled and you need a new vehicle. Well, get started by going to theautoloanpro.com because there's a likelihood that you're going to have to at least put some money down and you're going to have to have a loan to get your new vehicle. Go to the Auto Loan Pro, click to download the Game Plan Playbook and get the best rate on your new vehicle. At autoloanpro.com, they are battling uh, for your best interest rate and your best payment and what they're going to do is work with 50 different lenders who are going to compete for your business so you don't have to walk in and wind up with a, uh, a a rate that you don't like. And here's another part of it. Because your car was totaled, you don't have a trade-in. So Auto Loan Pro is going to be able to help you out in that regard, too. If you are trading in a vehicle, you can value your trade at AutoLoanPro.com. Just go to their website and check out the drop-down menu. And you can shop for vehicles, too. Whether you want a used vehicle, maybe something under $10,000, you can do that at AutoLoanPro.com. If you're in the market for a new vehicle, for whatever reason, and if you can make a payment on a vehicle, then you can get a loan at autoloanpro.com. This is Rocky with your Sports Center update brought to you by Saliga Heating and Cooling. The Blues last night with a rough 2 1 loss to the Vegas Golden Knights. They are now five points back in the Western Conference. The Vegas Golden Knights do have another game tonight facing off the Predators that would take them to 72 games. So they could be, even with the Blues in 72 games, and as many as seven points ahead of them in the West. Blues are back in action tomorrow facing off against the Flames down at Enterprise Center. 7 p.m. puck drop, 6 p.m. pregame right here on your home for the St. Louis Blues 101 ESPN. Speaking of Blues, talking you can go back later today and listen to John Kelly as he spoke, talked over with Brooke, Danny, and Randy on our Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers podcast. That is your Sports Center update brought to you by Saliga Heating and Cooling, an independent American standard heating and air conditioning dealer. Welcome back. 
to the opening drive. Brooke, Dan, and Rock here, and it is time for the fight and our fighter today taking on Megamite, a.k.a. Randy, is Jim. Jim, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right. How are you? We're doing great. Are you ready to face Randy in the fight? First of all, have you faced Randy in the fight before? Never. Never. Nervous? Excited? Scared? Uh, <laughs> one of the three, I guess. Or all of the above. You can also do that. You never know. It, it can always go a million different ways. Were well, you ready to take on Randy in the fight, Jim? Absolutely. Question number one. The Oakland A's played in three straight World Series in 88, 89, and 90, winning just one of three, but doing so with a sweep over this National League squad. Was it the Reds, the Dodgers, or the Giants? Uh, the Reds. Final answer, Final Jim? Answer. Okay. Yes, Which skater came with Brett Hall in his trade to the St. Louis Blues from the Flames, playing just seven games before being shipped out before the next season? Steve Bozek, Rick Wamsley, Tony McKegney. Uh, I'll say Steve Bozek. Is that your final answer, Jim? Final answer, yes. All yes. right, thank you. Even though Bobby Plager was two years younger than Barkley Plager, he made his NHL debut three years earlier than his older brother with which original six franchise? Was it the oh. Montreal Canadiens? Oh, the Montreal Canadiens, the Boston Bruins, or the New York Rangers? Uh, I will say, I don't know why, I'll say the uh, New York Rangers, final answer. All right, question four. Which Final Four title game ranks as the most watched game in college basketball history? Was it Duke, Michigan in 1992? You may recall that was the Fab Five. You had NC State against Houston in 83, Jimmy V against Five Slamma Jamma, or is it Michigan State, Indiana State? That was Magic against Bird. Oh, most watch ever. You'd think there would be uh, more watchers later on, so I'll say uh, the Michigan Duke final answer. Okay. We'll double check the score. All right, how are you feeling, Jim? It felt, I felt a lot of anguish on your side. Not great. <laughs> you never know. You never know how it will go for Randy All here. All right. As he comes trotting in right now with no grapes. Where are the grapes today, Randy? Finished them. Wow. Done. Uh-oh. Yep. Uh, Fueled by that's grapes. Trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Randy, say hi to Jim. Jim, good morning. How you doing? Doing well, Randy. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing well, except, well, I was gone. It got really cold in this room. It's really cold. It's like a meat locker in yeah. here. We need to fix this. Yeah, we do. We'll get, I, we'll I get going on that. I can't in these conditions. You can't. <laughs> All right, you ready to take Jim Find on the lot, buddy. Fight? I'm ready. Okay. Yeah. Question number one, Randy. The Oakland A's played in three straight World Series in 88, 89, and 90, winning just one of three, but doing so with a sweep over this National League squad. Oh, man. Should I do the lifeline? Really? Okay. Um, Reds? Oh, you no, won. No, 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 no. Oh, no, I thought no, you no. said you wanted to. No, no, no. I, I asked, thought you were being I, I serious. I said, should I do the lifeline? Oh, I, I heard. I'm sorry. I misheard, and I thought you said, okay. I'll do the lifeline. I was like, no. I mean, if you want. No, they, they actually had an earthquake in the middle of this World Series, Brooke. Okay. Uh, in the Bay Area, and they had... I wonder if there's anything to this question because they had a bridge collapse. Uh, they did, seriously, during the earthquake in 1989. And that's, uh, they did. It was the uh, San Francisco Giants. It was the Bay Bridge. I'm, I am shocked. I, I wonder if there's timing here. Matthew? No. no? He says no. no. He makes these questions this the was night before. At, this was written at 10, 12 p.m. yesterday. Okay. All right. Yeah, the timing of that is not <laughs> oh, great. Oh, man. See? Question two, I'm Randy. paying attention to current events, Dan. Which skater came with Brett Hall in his trade to the St. Louis Blues from the Flames, oh. playing just seven games before being shipped out before the next season? Oh, no. It happened? Uh, okay, so we send uh, Wammer and Rammer, uh, right, to, to Calgary, and we get back uh, Hully and not Tyler Bozak, but Steve Bozek. Steve, B-O-Z-E-K. It was Hully and Bozek that, re that came back in return in that deal. Question three, please. 
Even though Bobby Plager was two years younger than Barkley Plager, he made his NHL debut three years earlier than his older brother with which original six franchise? I think they were, uh, I, I think that uh, Barkley or Bobby might have been a New York Ranger. I think he was a New York Ranger. Uh, and uh, played in the minors and got to know Brooks Robinson when he was in the Rangers minor league system in Balmer. Isn't mm-hmm. that interesting? They were tight. Bo- uh, Brooks Robinson and Bob Plager were tight. I did not know that. Yeah, mm-hmm. how about that? You ready for question four? I'm ready. Which Final Four title game ranks as the most watched game in college basketball history? Okay, I'm going to go by percentages here. And I'm going to say that it's Indiana State and Michigan State. I'm going to say it's Bird and Magic. That's what I'm going to go with, even though it might be wrong. I think it might be the highest rated college NCAA championship game ever. I'm going to go with that one. There was Lindenwood and Culver Stockton. That was a big one. Um, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Matthew, do your thing. <laughs> it was Lindenwood it was and what Culver Stockton. It was huge. Yeah, oh, back in the day. Oh, oh, oh. Was Jim in his first time ever taking on Randy Carricker? No gauntlet, no four o'clock fight. This this guy was the first time ever he was taking you on, Randy. Mm-hmm. Did you go easy on him? Did you give him a win? Or did you did you just show no mercy as per usual? He has no idea what happened, so let's ring that bell and tell him. Go crazy, folks! Go crazy! The winner and still champion of the fight. The fight is presented by Golf Discount of St. Louis with the most experienced club fitters in town. Why shop anywhere else? I, oh. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm laughing because Matthew was actually beside himself that I would think that he was doing uh, a current events fight. <laughs> that, that, whole, that whole first question terrible. was a mess. That was a whole mess. Not terrible. It's current I events. Just, stand that, I want people to know what's It was on. completely unrelated. I cannot believe that actually happened that way. Jim, I'm so sorry. You fell in the fight today, 4-2 to two to Randy Carricker. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That, that's, 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 that's a good reaction. Let's go through the questions and answers. Oakland A's played in three straight World Series. 88, they lose to the Giants 4-1. to 89, they sweep the – or sorry, they lose to the Dodgers 4-1. to They sweep the Giants in 89, and they lose to the Reds uh, also getting swept in 90. I think Dave uh, so Stewart was the, the MVP, right? Won a couple of games in a sweep? Yep. There you um, go. I can double-check that. Really quickly, if I can just click on a page correctly, but I can't. I'm having fumble fingers. The MVP was Dave Stewart. There you go. Which skater came with Brett Hull and his trade to the St. Louis Blues from the Flames? I don't know why I doubted you. Playing just seven games before being shipped out before the season. It was, the season, it was, in fact, Steve Bozak. He was traded twice before he finally landed on another NHL team and played some games. Even though Bobby Plager was two years younger than Barkley, he made his NHL debut three years earlier for the New York Rangers. Didn't play a lot, but still three years with an original six franchise before coming over with his brother to the St. Louis Blues. And which Final Four title? game ranks as the most watched game in college basketball history by the numbers it is still the 35 million people watched that game still number one michigan state indiana state in 1979 the most watched college title game ever that might that might stick around a while now because we just don't have the star power that magic and bird delivered in in that game yeah i agree and i thought the fab five would certainly be up mm-hmm. there I watch that documentary probably five to ten so times, good. I bet. It it's is so, so good. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, so good. Really good. Loved it. So congratulations to Randy Carricker on a 4-2 win. Jim, thank you so much again for joining the fight and joining the show today. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the day. Thank you, Jim. Bye, you too. Jim. Take care. Jim with us on 101 ESPN. Coming up, Shooter McGavin has revealed that they're making a Happy Gilmore sequel. I don't know if his real name is Shooter McGavin. I don't think so. But, what a great uh, name, though. It is. It's it's a great name. So, of all the sports movies that have ever been made, which one would you like to see a sequel made for? I've got one that's really fun next on 101 ESPN.
Hey kids, Together Credit Union, CDSC's official banking partner, is offering you a great, safe, and reliable way to grow your money. Certificates of deposit or CDs are an attractive investment for new and experienced investors because the return on your investment is fixed and it's guaranteed. Right now, Together Credit Union is offering two fantastic CD promotions. Your first CD rate option, an 11-month CD term with 5.40% annual percentage yield, and your second CD rate option is a 19-month CD term with a 5.00 annual percentage yield. Both options require a minimum balance of $1,000. All you need to do is go to your nearest Together Credit Union branch or visit togethercu.org today to learn more. Now, you need to know that early withdrawal penalties apply and may reduce earnings on the account. Rate offers are accurate as of January 18th, respectively. Rate subject to change without notice. Other rates and terms available. Membership eligibility required federally insured by the NCUA. Now, the another thing you need to know about Together Credit Union, their exclusive City SC debit card. Ask about it at Together Credit Union. A free lifetime My City Plus membership, in stadium discounts on food, beverages, and merchandise, and express entry into City SC matches. It's the Together Credit Union City SC debit card. Head to your nearest Together Credit Union branch today. Entertainment, and that is that we are going to have, if you aren't aware of it, a sequel to Happy Gilmore. Are you excited about knowing what happens with uh, Happy after everything, after he gets the house back for Grandma and everything? <laughs> yeah, I do want to know. So it's it's going to be exciting. So here's how we learned about this, and it's pretty exciting stuff. Uh, Shooter McGavin is uh, the the guy who was the the foil for Happy Gilmore, and he was actually doing a radio appearance, Christopher McDonald was, on a Cleveland radio show, and he said that Happy Gilmore 2 is now in the works. So we've got that coming out. One of the greatest golf movies of all time, Happy Gilmore. We're going to have a sequel. So the question is, what sports movie, and don't say Rocky because we already had it, what sports movie would you like to see a sequel for? I would like to see the sequel that shows Billy Bean's Oakland <laughs> Athletics losing in the ALDS in 2002 and then losing in the ALDS in 2003 and then not even making the playoffs in 04 and 05. <laughs> I want to see Moneyball 2, 3, 4, and 5. 
Let me tell you, what happens to Hudson, Mulder, and Zito? That's a good question, Dan. <laughs> okay. We didn't we didn't even find out that in Moneyball 1. Or no. Tejada, by the way. And that, that might have helped a little bit. That yeah. may have been a contributing factor as to why they won a lot of games. I'm just saying. Yeah, did not Miguel Tejada in that year. Scott Hatterberg was really the, the, the guy there. Miguel Tejada was the MVP of the league. Yeah. It wasn't. It had nothing to do with Scott Hatterberg. Well, and the, and little, the three starters were awfully good. They were, they, and they were never mentioned in the movie. No, so I want to see Moneyball two with Hudson Zito Mulder. Okay, I think that'd be a good one for an update. I'm going to go with one of my favorite football movies. And I was thinking, when I was thinking about this last night, do I go fictional or do I go based on a true story? Because you could also say an update on the Blind Side. Now that we know that there's more developing <laughs> yeah. stories coming out of that, but the other one, one of my favorite football movies, is Any Given Sunday. An update on that. Maybe Al Pacino's character is now the commissioner of the NFL. Mm -hmm. I love that movie. Where's Dennis Quaid then? Would he be a general manager, or is his is he dealing that. with CTE? Oh, well, yeah, his wife did force him <laughs> okay. to go back into the Brooke, game. I got this. Blind Side Two. When justice is blindsided. Oh. Bam. But do you guys remember any given Sunday? I, yes. I oh loved God, every yeah. part of that movie. But to your point, Dan, yeah, he might be dealing with some yeah. issues there because his wife was very uh, aggressive with how she handled things. But I, what I liked about it is it gave you kind of different elements that I think are very accurate to what athletes go through behind the scenes and on the other side of the business side as well. Good idea. I'll go with uh, dodgeball. Yes. And I want to see if the average Joes can uh, repeat out in Vegas. Peter LaFleur. Peter LaFleur. You got Vince <laughs> uh, Vaughn. You got Ben Stiller. It's a great movie. And uh, I, I don't know if I'd sleep at night knowing that that was out there and if the average Joes uh, can repeat in dodgeball. And, you know, Dan, one of the things about dodgeball, you know, we tend to forget that the 99 Rams benefited from Jamal Anderson getting hurt and Steve Young getting hurt, right? What if the, uh, the, the Girl Scouts don't get popped for roids? You know, I've been wondering, speaking of that, I've been wondering if your grapes are loaded with roids <laughs> to, help, to help you think. You're amazing, man. Yeah, I agree with you, Dan. I think we need to test these grapes. Where specifically do you get these grapes, <laughs> Schnooks, Randy? of course. Schnooks? Okay. Yeah, I'm we saying might last need to look into these a pound. grapes at Schnooks. In fairness, once they started putting out cotton candy grapes, you had to be, you had to be wondering, what are they spraying on there to get these grapes tasting like candy? Well, I just, just want to know, Mega Mind and how you're doing it. I know you're well-versed. I know that you understand and know a lot of sports history, mm -hmm. but there's got to be something there, Randy. I'm just saying maybe Roy's in the grapes. This should be a good movie. Yeah. It's a compliment, yeah. really. Thank you. It's a Appreciate backhanded you. compliment. That's very nice of you. No, uh, you're before welcome. we get to the text, does anybody want to see, do, do we do we really want to see the sequel to The Natural and what happens to Roy? <laughs> dies what do you of think would happen? He dies. He, of, dies. he dies of lung cancer by no, he, he, 48. That, that was like a, combined a, with a the gunshot wound. shot that yeah. he took. Oh, he, he, you he made it. You combine the gunshot yeah. wound with just living life in the 50s. And yeah, but he's playing catch he's with dead his by, kid at the end. He's dead by 54. But he had to retire because of that gunshot wound. That doesn't mean he died. I think it was eating his stomach. Yeah, he dies. Yeah, you're right. Well, yeah. So that's, that's why that's I don't want to see the sequel. Unless that son, who, by the way, looked like he was going to be a big old... Hoss pitcher, <laughs> maybe maybe that's the natural. Tip. I like I like Danny Max because you have Dwight Goodman being super fat at the end of at the end of the movie. So mm -hmm. then you can have a, like a like a thing where he loses all the weight mm -hmm. and gets powerful again, and they got to beat him again. Hold on, I like what you're doing here. What are you talking about? Dwight Goodman, a dodgeball. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He, it's Dwight Goodman. Sorry, yeah, yeah. he's all oh, he's Wyatt. all he's all fat at the very end of the movie. <laughs> he's mashing the food, he's, pizza, yeah. everything's you know, going screw down. You Chuck Norris, all, yeah. all, all that. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go with um. Uh, Fever Pitch 2, Fever Pitcher, mm -hmm. whereas Jimmy Fallon uh, becomes really good friends with the uh, Red Sox pitchers, and he actually is the reason they get in trouble in 2012 because of the fried chicken scandal. Uh, now we're playing. <laughs> he, becomes, we're playing. He, he becomes friends with all those guys, and he's the reason that, that the uh, whatever ESPN or the Boston Herald finds out about the beer and the chicken. We call it Fever Pitcher. Maybe uh, he finds out about the bloody sock. That, okay, that too. I like that. <laughs> Maybe he's got intel <laughs> yes. with the uh, starting five of the uh, Boston Red Sox. I love this text from the 618. I, Tanya, focusing on her boxing career. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Randy. It was a text. No. I love it. That, that, uh, that story got really sad. I, Tanya, it? was really good. That was, was a really good, good movie. Her mom was nuts. Uh, that, uh, that woman is such a great actress, Allison Janney. She's great. The oh, mother? Yes. 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 Yeah, she was great. Uh, Air Bud, that mutt can putt. 
<laughs> Hasn't there been multiple Air Buds around? Yeah, we've already had the that. sequel to that. And Correct. that's and that's another thing that I always get scared of when it comes to sequels is sometimes it just kind of tarnishes oh. the whole series. There was a me. Caddyshack too, and if you have not There's seen it, yes. don't. That's what I'm saying yeah. is that it just kind of just puts like a little stain. Yeah. Of course, you enjoy the first movie, but the sequel, it's like, did we really need to do this? Have you seen the, the remake of Roadhouse yet? No. I'm a big fan of Roadhouse, Patrick Swayze, mm -hmm. and apparently the new one is terrible. Really? Just getting terrible reviews. You know, the Who's other one, it? they had a straight-to-video slap shot, too. Yes. Oh. It was bad. Yep. Wait, it has Jake Gyllenhaal and Conor McGregor? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're all in it. Oh, man. They're all in <laughs> They're there. One? Did you guys see the, uh, it was uh, Jennifer Garner and Kevin Costner draft day? Yeah. And he says, I want to see how good the people they drafted were. It was always Vontae Mack, as you know. Yeah. But to, did the quarterback turn out to be a good player? I, I think draft day two would be fun. Someone uh, says the last dance, Marcus and uh, Marcus and Larsa in love. No. They're done, by the way. It's a fresh they, Yeah. Is it, is it, are, they back, are, are they done again? They're Dunskis. done again. Yeah. She left him because he's that? lazy. Mm. <sighs> Hmm. Dan, that's the right reaction, mm. honestly. Right reaction. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that I didn't get that news before the fight. <laughs> You're dejected. I'm, I'm, I'm flustered. I'm flustered. 408 says we need more of the bad news bears. Why not like oh. a, uh, I love the bad news bears. What What about a, you know, 2024 version That'd of the good. bad news bears? I like that. Hmm. Uh, here we go. Somebody, I, I had this idea during the break. American Underdog, the rest of Kurt's story is almost as awesome. I think that'd be fun to see the sequel to uh, American Underdog. How was the first one? I like the first one. There was some idea. things left out, though. Yeah. How are, uh, Charlie Army. Did Zachary Levi never throw a football growing up as a child? No. That was my only takeaway from that movie is that, like, Zachary Levi never grew up throwing a Here's football. Thing. <laughs> and we had the joke here when Mike Martz was the head coach of the Mrs. Doubtfire joke. Okay, enough with treating Mike Martz the way you treat him in movies. <laughs> Mike so Martz bad. was treated so poorly in that. And yes. that was... Was he treated poorly in oh, that? Yeah. He yes. was made to look bad. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't fair. It but was he not. came out in the Patriots documentary and said, I should have handled Kurt differently. Yeah. He was very, very uh, classy in what he said. Yeah, he, he has been. Or I'm yeah. sorry, the Kurt Warner um, story on NFL Network. Right. He was on yeah. that and said, I sh he goes, I mishandled that. I should have I handled it yeah. way differently than I did. Yeah. And in the Patriots documentary, he... He 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 given many people in St. Louis a story about how a former Patriots player told him that Belichick essentially said before the game, hold because they aren't going to call it. Yep. And they did. And they didn't. Uh, Jerry Maguire. How about that? Jerry Maguire, too. Somebody says he can't get any baseball players signed anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like, I like the, good, the allegory of him as just Scott yeah. Boris. I like that. Yeah. What about this Waterboy 2? I'd oh. like to see that. Was that Bobby that Boucher? Is Bobby Boucher. That is <laughs> yeah. I love Bobby. it. H2O. <laughs> I would love to see Kingpin 2. Oh, that'd be good. Oh. Roy Munson has some kind of surgery on his hand to come back. I would love to see that. Ooh, this is a great idea. 608 to play into the new fad that everybody's into, pickleball. Dodgeball cast, but they play in a pickleball tournament. That'd be on good. On the Ocho. Yes, that'd be good. That's true, and I like that one. On the Ocho. <laughs> that's actually, that, Dodgeball 2, but it's pickleball and it's still on the Ocho. We need that. That's actually really smart. Oh, yeah. That's a really good, that's probably the best one we've got. You know what else we need? We need a second Ricky Bobby movie. Yes. He'd be great. Yeah. Yep. Be Talladega great. Talladega Nights. Tal was, was there not a second one, or am I just imagining? No, I don't that? think there, there was. I don't there was an there Anchorman was 2, Bobby. but I don't oh, think there was okay. a Talladega Nights. Which was outstanding. That's what was I was it for really? Halloween. Oh, this Anchorman year. 2? It was good. It's great. It, was, it was actually good. There oh, would be a mint yeah. julep waiting for you on the other side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stonewall Jackson? Yeah, it was great. It is. I never gave on. I, I am blind. <laughs> I never gave Anchorman two a chance. Oh, was, oh you should. Oh, no, I got to watch good. that today. It's it actually is. Yeah, it yes. really is good. Yes. Uh, thanks for all your texts. We do appreciate it. Coming up next here on 101 ESPN, we've got the rush hour reset on the opening drive.
More than 13,000 guys are clients of Mentality, and at Mentality, they see two kinds of guys, those with excuses and those who get results. And most of the guys with excuses just don't understand that there is a solution. That's why over 13,000 guys have joined Mentality and stopped making excuses. You can join Mentality as well and get your edge back. If you're fatigued and tired all the time, maybe you're moody or irritable or you're just not as sharp mentally as you used to be, could be a problem with low T. And at Mentality, they're going to solve that problem. They're going to have their board-certified physicians do a complete panel on your blood work. And then when they find out where your testosterone level is, they have an FDA-approved testosterone treatment that will restore your testosterone level to where it was when you were in your 20s. And they're going to work with your insurance company to make sure that your out-of-pocket expenses are as low as they can possibly be. You can regain the energy. You can regain the strength, the ability to get through a workout or a round of golf walking 18 holes. You can do it by going to Mentality. Start today at LowTUSA.com. It is 9.04 in St. Louis. Your time check brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler. Brooke, Dan, Matthew, Randy, great to have you with us on the opening drive. Blues fall last night to the Golden Knights of uh, Vegas by a score of 2-1 to one in overtime. Jonathan Marcheseau with the winner after Pavel Buchnevich had missed on a penalty shot attempt a couple of minutes into OT and Vegas with the overtime win is now five points ahead of the Blues for that final wild card spot in the Western Conference. Vegas is at Nicheville tonight. Well, it's just like J.K. said earlier. Basically, you're going to need a little bit of help from other teams because they do not control their own destiny at this point. I'm talking about the Blues. It's tough because that just felt like a really crushing loss for him. I thought that the effort was there. Jordan Bennington has been fantastic all season, and once again, he was last night. Brandon Saad has been fantastic in the month of March, but it just didn't work out well for him. It felt like Vegas really was the more physically dominant team. I know that I mentioned this earlier. It felt like they were headhunting a little bit, too, in that game, but they were definitely the more physically dominant team. Ten games to go, six at home, mathematically still alive, doesn't look very easy. As J.K. said, though, Vegas, a lot of games on the road, not an easy uh, stretch of games for them coming up. The Blues are going to need some help here down the stretch. They did get the point last night, but they needed two. They needed Vegas not to get any. And I, I'm, I'm with you, third period, Buchnevich had a, a chance. He also had a deflection that was almost in. Tory Krug, Braden Shin hit the crossbar. Saad had a great chance as well. He's picked it up. He's got five goals in his last 10 games but not enough and that third period kind of did them in because they had their chances didn't work out Oscar Sundquist by the way hurt in that game mm -hmm. we don't know the extent of how long he'll be out probably gives uh, Zach Dean and Nikita Ag Alexandrov some time here coming up but you know not easy you know 10 yeah. games to go and six at home and you, you need some help along the way Blues will play the Flames on Thursday night at Enterprise Center. We'll have that for you here on 101 ESPN. The Cardinals wrap up spring training today in Arizona. Kyle Gibson will go for the Redbirds against Shoto Imanaga of the Cubs. It's a 2 o'clock game, and that one is on MLB.TV nationally. It's on the Marquee Network, but you'll be able to watch it if you have MLB.TV, and you'll be able to see that one today. The Cardinals, after a day off tomorrow, will open their 2024 championship campaign. The championship season is what Major League Baseball calls it against the Doyers, and they'll pitch Miles Michaelis against Tyler Glass now, and that's a three o'clock game on 
Thursday. And once again, bearing the lead, Randy, because Dylan Carlson oh, yeah. was the big news that everybody was talking about yesterday after his collision with Jordan Walker in the outfield. A very unfortunate situation. Hopefully, we'll get an update today, but it looked like, and just based off the reports, John Den of MLB.com reporting from the team that was a left shoulder injury, but we don't know the severity of it at this point, and hopefully it won't be too much, because right now, this is your outfield going mm -hmm. into starting the season. You have Brendan Donovan, Michael Ciani, and you have Jordan Walker. Not the outfield that that anybody was predicting for them to start the season with. And Burleson as well. You know, yes. he would get a shot probably in left field. But the idea was is that Siani would come off the bench if you had, let's say, Donovan at in left field. Mm -hmm. You could move him to second base if you had a, a lead. Or if you had Burleson in left, you could get him out with a lead. So not ideal. And I'm sure a lot of fans are waking up this morning. They hear that and they think, Victor Scott, and would this be enough mm -hmm. to bring him up? Now, the question would be, the time period that you feel that Newpar is going to be out or Tommy Edmond. Tommy Edmond is going to take a while. He needs to swing the bat and show that he's healthy. But, uh, yeah, it's it's interesting now. And they need good news, clearly, when they get to the ballpark today on, on Dylan Carlson. They need him to be ready. And if you watched the XFL last year, you saw their unique kickoff setup. Well, this morning, NFL owners have approved that kickoff setup for the NFL. No one other than the kicker and returner can move until the ball hits the ground or hits a player inside the landing zone inside the 30-yard line. And so the NFL stealing the kickoff from <laughs> kickoff rules from the XFL to prevent more injuries and concussions. And the kickoff team moves way up, correct? They'll Towards the receiving team. They, they, the, right, the re return team and the kicking team are really compressed. So the kick, kicking team will kick from the 35-yard line. The other 10 players on the kickoff team will be at the receiving team's 40. So the kicking team moves way up, and at least nine members of the return team will line up in a setup zone between the 30 and 35. So they'll essentially be within 10 yards of each other when the ball is kicked. So no surprise onside kick? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That would take that away. I like that, though. I it just want to see some returns, though. Everybody just kicks yeah. it out. And yeah. I get it. But maybe you get more returns out of this? I think I, so. I, I like think you the do. surprise onside kick, so I'm, yeah. I'm a little disappointed. Yeah, if, if nobody can move until the ball hits a returner, then that's the way it could be. It's, it, I, I like the idea of enhancing, because we see f so few successful onside kicks anyway. Yeah. I like the idea of enhancing the... Uh, the return game because I was to a point with the NFL where I thought why did they, they even, even do it? Why yeah. not just have the the team that gets scored against start at their own 25? Yeah, I was with you too And I guess it limits injuries too, which is the yeah. number one thing in doing this and to put a little bit more excitement into your special team So I kind of like it. I watched it last year last spring and I thought it worked out fairly well and the the NFL is stealing a lot of things this I tell you what, these spring games are great for players, and it's a chance to showcase themselves. But this is actually, in my opinion, a great thing for the NFL. They can watch various things that are mm -hmm. done. You know, you can say you're tricking up the game, but you watch how the NFL has changed their coverage. You watch how they've now changed some of the rules. It's beneficial for the National Football League to have this. It's super beneficial. I think that it's you see it with Major League Baseball all the time where you can test out things in the minors, and now you have the ability to do that. Essentially, I, not that this could be a minor league team for you. They're not calling it that, right? But you have had a lot of former XFL players, USFL players who have gone and made some teams mm -hmm. in the NFL. But this seems like you could really workshop some things and also maybe get some talent that was overlooked. Right, and I think that's a good thing. By the way, the Battlehawks open up their season at Michigan on Saturday. It's a 3 o'clock game on Fox, so your Battlehawks opening up on Saturday at 3 o'clock at Michigan, and then the home opener Saturday, April 6th, 7 o'clock at the Dome, and that one will be seen on ABC, and it'll be a massive crowd. Tickets still available, though, if you want to go see the Battlehawks open up against the hated Arlington Renegades. So we'll have a lot going on on Saturday because you'll have the Blues playing on Saturday, mm -hmm. you'll have the Battlehawks playing, and you'll have have the Cardinals playing and City SC? SC's playing. Yep. By the way, the NFL's got the best setup going. First of all, they're making a ton of money. Secondly, they don't have a minor league system. And then if they want to try things out, they've got the uh, UFL to do all that for them. Mm -hmm. They don't have to pay into a minor league system. <laughs> I mean, amazing. college is set up for them. That's their minor league system. It is the perfect setup that they have right now in pro sports. And they yeah. probably are saying that to the UFLs, that we don't exactly need your help. We'll, like, we'll test out your ideas, though. We'll, we'll take your ideas Absolutely. from you. Remember how they put the camera 
and I love the camera that goes back and forth yes. behind the players, or you can see the right by the huddle. That was the XFL mm -hmm. that did that. I mean, there's a lot of things that they can pick up to make the television product even better, which is it's exemplary already. It's it's incredible. That's your Rush Hour Reset here on 101 ESPN. Coming up, you may or may not be aware of the Puck Cancer event coming up April 5th at the Centene Ice Center. A lot of stars are going to be here, and it's going to benefit people that are dealing with cancer. And one of those is former NHL player and coach and college coach Tony Granato, who will join us next here on 101 ESPN. I want you to know about Gloria Lou. This message is for potential home sellers. If you need a reliable, experienced, and trusted agent, take it from me and get to know Gloria Lou with your home sold, guaranteed realty. There are so many reasons to use Gloria Lou, and among them is that she already has buyers in place. It's pretty incredible, but she's been in the business for 20 years, and over those years, she has collected a database of buyers that are ready to buy in your price range and in your neighborhood. And Gloria's name and her promise, sell it all. Your home sold, guaranteed realty. She'll have solutions for you. She has solutions for every type of home seller. If you want a fast sale with no hassles, Gloria's 24-hour cash offer solution is a great option to consider. You don't have to deal with any showings. You don't have to deal with any costly repairs. You pick the closing date and you always get the highest cash offer bid from that database I was talking about of buyers and what she calls her cash offer bid box. Gloria's number is 314-325-6888, 314-325-6888, or you can visit her on the web at GloriaHasTheBuyers.com. She's the only person I'd use to sell my house. It's Gloria Lou at GloriaHasTheBuyers.com.
the opening drive on 101 ESPN. Brooke Grimsley, Dan McLaughlin, I'm Randy Carricker. It's great to have you with us. And the Blues are having their puck cancer event coming up April 5th at the Centene Community Center. And there are going to be myriad stars and hockey uh, illuminati there. And among those that are going to join us are Tony Granato, former great NHL player, NHL coach. He was the coach of the uh, U.S. Olympic team in 2018 and joins us now on the celebrity line on 101 ESPN. And Tony uh, is dealing uh, with, with cancer as well. Uh, he was diagnosed last year with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, Tony, first of all, good morning. Thanks for joining us. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing pretty well, you guys. Thanks for having me on. And how are you feeling? How, how's your battle going? <laughs> well, I'm doing pretty well. I feel, I feel uh, pretty good today. Uh, yesterday was uh, the start of my chemo week, so I got a pretty heavy week of medicine this week. But this is my final week of my 18 week uh first cycle of treatments uh once i finish this i'll get a few weeks uh, break which will give me time to come to st louis for the big event and then i begin some radiation after that mm. tony thank you so much for joining us how did you get involved with this puck cancer event it seems like you're very close with chaser that would be the connection right there so chaser uh we uh, similar times we get diagnosed with the cancer and uh you know, I was getting ready to contact him because I knew I was going through some stuff that was going to lead to cancer. Uh, his announcement came out a little bit earlier, so I got a hold of him on the day I officially knew what kind of cancer I had and the day I knew I was going for treatment. So uh, we've been in touch uh, quite a bit over the past uh, few months, kind of encouraging each other. Uh, he's, a, <laughs> he's a great guy to have on your team, I'll tell you that. So. Uh, we've we've got to gone through this together. Some of the days are tough. Some of the days you need a buddy to call you up and cheer you up. Uh, and when you're dealing with something that one of your friends is dealing with at the same time, I think it's a, a really good way to kind of help each other through it. Now, I want to go back to the playing days for you two, because I assume that you guys played against each other, but not at the same time together. Is there any stories about when you guys played against each other? <laughs> oh, yeah. There's some good ones. There, do you, you guys know the name Stefan Matteau? He's Matteau, Matteau, Matteau after he scored his mm -hmm. goal for the, for the Rangers there to help them win the Stanley Cup. Steph was on my team. We were playing in St. Louis, and, and for some reason the game was getting a little wacky. And I'm lined up on a face-off right in front of our bench against Tony Twist. Chaser's lined up against uh, Stefan Matteau, my winger. And I do something stupid against Chase or against the Tony Twist, which starts a five-on-five -five fight. <laughs> And, and steps over there by himself with Chaser for about three minutes, and Chaser just Chaser just dragged him around the rink and pounded him. So at the end of the game, uh, Steph was going, "What the heck did you start that for? I just got my ass kicked by by uh, uh, Chaser for five minutes because you were fooling around with twists." So uh, so Ch Chaser uh, owes an apology to Steph, and Steph Steph laughs at me every time he sees me now. So. Uh, that's that's my one on ice incident that I remember with Chaser. Don't screw around with Chaser or anybody else, or your teammates are going to get mad at you. That's it. It's great to have former NHL player coach Tony Granato to promote puck cancer. And and Tony, I got to ask you, as a, a coach, motivator, mentor, what would you say to others right now that are listening and, and battling through what you're going through, or, or those battling cancer? earlier i think having a, a great support my family uh and my brother donnie has gone through it other family members have gone through different cancer treatments along the way uh you need a team behind you because there are days that become tough there are things that are going to happen during the treatment uh that aren't very friendly that you have to understand that that's just part of understanding that good days are going to follow the bad days if you stay with it and um uh, so I think that having a support team, understanding that little texts and messages and notes and little things that arrive at your front door with a little message on it uh, are very encouraging and, and give you uh, something to smile about during some dark days. So I think that <clears throat> that's really important. So don't think you should do this alone and don't think it's, uh, you know, you're, you're taking anything away from other people because I think other people and friends and family love to uh, be, in, be there with you through it. So I think that would be one. And then the, the, the thing that is also encouraging, going to the hospitals, uh, you know, for your treatments and seeing your nurses and your doctors and all of the people there that are, are uh, you know, doing everything they can on their end to help you through it, uh, be appreciative of, of the support from, from uh, you know, the medical people that are part of it. 
Tony Granada with us on 101 ESPN. And Tony, I want to tell you, have you tell us the story about one of the most unique coaching situations ever when Joel Quenville took over for you in Colorado, but you stayed on as an assistant. <laughs> t tell us how that unfolded. You must have a, a tremendous amount of respect for Q. Oh, absolutely. You know, Q, uh, first of all, uh, you know, I, I got kind of thrown into it in, in, in a, uh, a quick way. I was only behind the bench for three months after retiring, and uh, there was a coaching change. Bob Hartley was removed from his position in Colorado, uh, and I was an assistant there, and I was asked to jump in. I did for a year and a half. I had, you know, so we had Sackick and Forsberg and Blake and Foot and Patty Waugh there. Uh, so we had a great team. Uh, we we finished two years in a row. We won the division. Uh, but then, you know, we didn't win in the playoffs. So so we thought, or Pierre Lacroix, the GM at the time, uh, thought that this would be a good thing that Joel was available uh, to bring him on. And, and ultimately he said, hey, Joel, you know, Tony's here. If, if you think he would be the right fit for you as an assistant, let's keep him on. If not, and you want to bring someone else in, that's okay too. And I was good with that too. I didn't want to. It'd be forced down his throat to and say, "Hey, Joe, you're, you know, you got to have Tony on your staff." So, so we had a, a, a good three or four months together uh, because of the lockout that year, uh, and and uh, the families connected right away. Joel and I connected right away. Donnie, my brother, had worked for Joel uh, previously, so I had known Q. My brother-in-law Ray had played with Joel, so I had a ton of respect to, for Joel prior to having our first. Uh, uh, time coaching together and and I thought it was a, a really good partnership as far as uh, the transition went for helping him through some stuff and obviously mean learning a lot from him so uh, Q's a tremendous man a uh, great friend uh, and uh, hopefully uh, we will see him on a bench uh, sometime soon again and he's going to be here for the event on April 5th so you'll have an opportunity to connect with him here in St. Louis apparently he's going to be assistant for Brett Hall the head coach Brett Hall that's going to be good. That's going to be good. <laughs> that's a heck of a lineup that's coming into town. And, and, uh, and again, that's kind of what we were talking about earlier about, you know, rallying with people. And, you know, I, I would assume, you know, Chaser's a, a tremendous recruiter and, and social butterfly, whatever you want to call him. You know, he probably was on the phone getting someone, and he probably said, hey, uh, Birch, can you come in? Hey, Butch, can you come in? Hey, Q, can you come in? And within three seconds, those guys were booking their flight to get in. So, so it's just uh, the, uh, the hockey world's a wonderful world uh, filled of great people. And when people need each other, they're there for each other. And that kind of, uh, uh, kind of sums up what this event will be. It's about people coming together to try to accomplish something and help other people out. And I think there'll be a lot of people that have dealt with cancer, whether it be themselves or family members, uh, that will be able to really uh, kind of uh, bring everybody together to kind of celebrate uh, hopefully positive things. Uh, that have happened in their lives with the cancer and, and again in the future. I mean, unfortunately, this disease isn't going away. And it's going to happen to other people that are going to have to be prepared to deal with it themselves or with their family members or friends. And this is kind of a good way to kind of help, uh, help people out. Hey, Tony, we are rooting so hard for you, and uh, our, our prayers are with you. We can't wait to see you here in town at the Centene Ice Center on April 5th, and uh, we'll come up and introduce ourselves. Thanks so much for the time this morning, yeah. and, and best of luck. Please do, and, and you guys uh, do a wonderful job, too, of promoting events like this and taking care of the Blues and all your other great sports teams there in St. Louis. So great. Thanks for, for being great uh, support of all of us. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Appreciate it. Tony Granato with us on 101 ESPN. Do you know the best way to get tickets, Randy? Do you have that? Ticketmaster. In okay, Ticketmaster. Go to Ticketmaster and uh, just uh, go uh, do a search for Puck Cancer. And if you just go to the stlblues.com on the right side on the, the main page of stlblues.com, just go to their news stories and uh, they have a story about the Puck Cancer event with a link to get tickets. Isn't this a testament to the hockey community and how it comes together? It's amazing. I mean, there aren't many sports, I don't know if there's any, that could get this amount of people together in a short amount of time. And it's not just guys that played in the NHL. We're talking about some of the biggest names in the history of this sport to come together. And it's a credit to Chaser. It's a credit to the Blues and really a credit to hockey in general and what it means here in St. Louis. It's great. Should the be Blues a great alum. time. Yeah, and the Blues alumni are fantastic. And the way that they support each other. And he's not wrong. Just looking at everybody who's coming to this, this is a great lineup. And you're even going to have some country music stars who are going to be coming to town for Garth this. Garth Brooks is going to be That's here. pretty big. He's an assistant coach to Sean Payton. Sean Payton, let's get him. Let's get him on the air.
Okay. We, we can, can ask we can him about Russell Wilson. Yeah, he, he, First question, <laughs> Russell Wilson, yeah, yes. Yeah. Back to your point. Yeah. Soft one, Brooke. Soft question, then go to the Power hard one. Things. Yeah, right. Yep. Second question. So about Russell Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> Pat, Pat and Pop. Pat and Pop. <laughs> then another soft one, then. So Greg Williams, your thoughts on him as a defensive coordinator. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Brett Hall, Mark Bergevin, Garth Butcher, Dirks Bentley, Chris Butler, Jim Campbell, Paul Cavallini, Blake Dunlop, Good Brian Lord. Elliott got to say hi to Moose, uh, Nelson Emerson, Bob Hess, Barrett Jackman, Cam Jansen, Mike Keene, Darren Kimball, Neil Kamadoski, uh, Jamal Mayers, Chris McAlpine, Andy McDonald, Scott Mellenby, Brendan Morrow, Trevor Rosen of Old Dominion, Brendan Shanahan, Tony Twist, Scotty Upshaw, Doug Waite, John Wensink, R- Rick Zombo and Mike Zook, and then from the rest of the NHL, you've got Eddie Belfour. He's going to slam his stick over the go- the crossbar. You know, you know that's going to happen. Jesse Bullerese, Brian Boyle, Adam Burrish, Chris Chelios, Dave Coulier, Michael Garnett, Cami Granado, Adam Graves, Stu Grimson, Adam Hall, Glenn Healy, Jamie Huscroft, Chris Joseph, Paul Kelly, Trevor Lewis, Kevin McGuire, Ryan Malone, Brad Marsh, Wendy McCreary, Jim McKenzie, Craig Neenhouse, George Peros, uh, ben Scrivens, Craig Simpson, Sheldon Soiree, D.B. Sweeney, he was on with B.K. and Ferrario the other day, Brian Trottier, Troy Volhoffer, and more. Enough sweaters to go around? I think they'll find Good them. Lord. Okay, It's amazing. It's a lot of people coming uh, in to St. Yes. Louis. It'll be great. Looking forward to it again. Just go to stlblues.com and uh, look for the Puck Cancer event. Coming up here on 101 ESPN, MLB.com had some bold predictions, outlandish predictions, the author said. How outlandish are they? We're going to tell you next on 101 ESPN. Hey, if you have a new home or maybe you just want to have your dogs be confined to the backyard, get in touch with my friends at Chesterfield Fence and Deck. Their number is 800-300-4054. You can find them on the web at chesterfieldfence.com. They've been in business for 56 years here in St. Louis, and they do great work on fences. Our fence is 
it's been around, you know, and it really has been a lifetime product like Chesterfield Fence and Deck said it would. It's a white vinyl fence, and they told us on the day we uh, had it installed, they said, now this will be a lifetime product for you, and it has been. They do fantastic work on both vinyl and wood fences and vinyl and wood decks. That new Vecca deck pewter color is absolutely beautiful, and they do sunrooms and screen rooms, custom design sunrooms and screen rooms for you. They'll come out and provide you a free, no-obligation project design at Chesterfield Fence and deck and when you use them during the course of this month well tell them randy sent you and get 48 months of interest free financing it's a great st louis company they're a plus rated by the better business bureau and they have great warranties for everything they do at chesterfield fence and deck again 800-300-4054 chesterfieldfence.com chesterfield fence and deck the sign you have the very best This is Rocky with your Sports Center update, driven by Johnny Londoff Chevrolet and Johnny Londoff Autoplex. The Blues last night fall to the Golden Knights, two to one in overtime, and now they have quite the hill to climb to get a playoff spot with just ten games remaining, and they are now five points back behind the Golden Knights. The Golden Knights still do have a game in hand. The Blues will be back in action tomorrow, facing off against the Flames down at Enterprise Center, seven p.m. puck drop, six p.m. pregame show, right here on one hundred and one ESPN. And then later today, the Cardinals and the Cubs finish out their spring schedule to the 2 p.m. first pitch on ESPN Plus, and then the Cardinals, of course, will open up their season on Thursday, starting against the Dodgers. That is your Sports Center update, driven by Johnny Londoff. Find the roads up 24/7 at Londoff.com and LondoffAutoplex.com. Are you kidding me? Good to have you with us on the opening drive on 101 ESPN. Brooke, Dan, and Randy. And an interesting piece by Anthony Cantrovince, Castrovince of MLB.com, uh, where he suggested seven outlandish predictions for the 2024 baseball season. Or are they, he asks. His number one prediction that is seemingly outlandish, especially now, is that Jackson Holiday will win the AL MVP award as a rookie. I'm saying that that's not going to happen. Really? Mm -hmm. Just to say it, to have fodder on the radio? I'm or? saying it because he's starting <laughs> the year in the minor leagues. Won't be long, though. I don't think it's going to be long. I think he's going to tear it up, and then they're going to have no other choice but to find a spot for him. So you don't think it's outlandish that he would win, win uh, MVP? Oh, now World? you're talking. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I do. MVP, I'll, I'll say that's a little outlandish for me. How many at-bats does he need to have? That's what we were discussing. It needs to be around 130. That's for rookie. Be. Oh, for rookie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. excuse for, me. For, for MVP. For MVP. It, yeah, yeah it, that's going to be a little outlandish yeah. there. I think it's also a certain amount of games if you play in yeah. or 130 at-bats for rookie. I, I can't wait to watch him play. <laughs> uh, I know that. And he'll be up at some point, kind of like Victor Scott for the uh, Cardinals. Mm -hmm. At some point, you're going to see him this year, and it'll just be a matter of – once they get them here, for any of these rookies that are highly highly thought of, when they come up, they're going to play. Mm -hmm. You're not going to sit them. They have to play. Mm -hmm. And that's what will happen with him. Anthony Castrovin's second one, the Dodgers will miss the postseason. <laughs> 
that's outlandish. They're gonna they're not gonna miss the postseason. There's no way they'll miss the postseason. There's no way. I think the question is whether or not they get to 110 wins. Yeah, they're gonna get better as the season goes along. They're gonna get Walker Buehler yep. going. They're gonna get Kershaw going. They might get Tony Gonsolin going. They are near what they're gonna be if they get healthy. Pitching, pitching, pitching. Yeah, and they're gonna have plenty of it, and yeah. they're gonna score enough in their the middle of their lineup is absolutely stacked. And to your point, Randy, they're gonna get healthier. So. What, what about this guy? 110 wins over under. What are you taking? I'm going to go over on them. Are you really? Yeah. There are th- three hitters in a row with Betts, Freeman, Otani. Might be the best three hitters ever put together in the history of baseball. Wow. That's saying something. Yeah, wow. it is. I mean, you go back to the 27 Yankees, it might be. Uh, just go back to what we had with the MV3. Might be better than the MV3. Modern era, I would have to say Pujols, Roland, Edmonds is probably, as as Tony would say, tied for first, right? This is right there with him. Yeah. And Betts makes it a more athletic trio, too, because mm-hmm. he can steal bases. Yeah. And he can play anywhere in the lineup. You know what I mean? He can play short. He can play second. He can play the outfield. He can play anywhere you want him on the diamond. Yeah. By the way, did you guys see... The, the photo that somebody had of uh, the two Dodgers working out in the outfield. No. And, uh, so you, and you've got the back of the jerseys, and it says Otani Betts. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good. A lot of the memes, too, have Pete Rose and Otani together. Yeah. Superimposed some way, somehow. Yeah. How about this one? The A's will be better than you think. You talk about 110 wins for the Dodgers. How about 110 losses <laughs> for the A's? I don't think the A's are going to be better than we think. So when he says better than you think, I don't think the expectations are high, so if they're just a little bit better than below expectations yeah, he says, of that. Uh, Castro, Castrovin says if they lose 90 games or fewer, that would greatly surpass most people's expectations. Last year, they lost 112. I agree with that because um, I, I don't think they're going to lose 100. I, I really don't. They've got Ross Stripling and Alex Wood. Mm-hmm. Those are two guys that you would think about in terms of major league talent in your rotation. Everybody else, not really. They have the number 10 prospect in Joe Boyle. They also have a number two prospect. I've seen this guy pitch. He throws like 102. Um, his name is Mason Miller. So if they get any kind of pitching, they'll at least hang around in some games. And when you hang around, you play so many games, you have a chance to win. That would be embarrassing if they would go 71 and 91 and the Cardinals went 71 and 91 one year if this year's A's go 71 and 91 which would be a good year for them and it was a disaster for the Cardinals but man that's tough I don't want to see that I want to see them lose more than 91 please they They should makes you feel a little bit they should how about this one Uh, Patrick Corbin will be an all-star and a mid-season trade chip a mid-season trade trip. Yeah. He has not been good since. Uh, Who's that again, Randy? Patrick Corbin of the Washington uh-huh. Nationals. It was good the first year they had him. He's been awful. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Kastrovitz writes, he's been arguably the least effective regular starter in baseball with the highest DRA among those with at least three and 800 mm. innings pitched in the last four years. So he's saying that outlandish would be that he bounces back? Outlandish, uh, yeah, that he that he would. But it's a, it's a free agent year for Corbin. You know what I think about free agent years? Tyler O'Neill included. Yep, better. If you find a way to make sure you take the ball every fifth day and somehow you become very effective. It's just yeah. that's just the way it works. And then one more from Anthony Kastrovitz. Division winners will include the Mariners, one exclamation point, the Phillies, two exclamation points, the Blue Jays, three exclamation points, the Royals, four exclamation points, and the Pirates, five exclamation points. The Pirates. Yeah, I know. The Pirates would be the one for me that may stand out. By the way, I think the Royals are going to be pretty good this year. I think they're going to be better. They're going to be better. Way better. Way yes. better. Yep. And they have more talent coming, too. But with what they did, they spent a lot of money this offseason. Mm-hmm. Quietly, kind of like the Giants, I think they've had one of the better off seasons uh, in baseball. Yeah, Waka, Lugo, uh, they signed Will Smith to be their closer. Yeah. They've, they, they've got players, and they, they added some offense as well. They're trying to get a new ballpark. They're trying there. Mm-hmm. And Bobby Witt Jr. has been paid Stunned. handsomely to build that ballpark around. And, you know, it's something you have to have. you got to have excitement around your club to persuade those that are not in favor of giving you your ballpark. There are some that say, well, they're trying. They're spending money. Right. we got to reward that. Yeah. And then the last one, guys. He suggests that the D-backs will return to the World Series and win it this time. Now that's a bold prediction. Royals did that in 2015. 
That is a bold prediction. I think it's outlandish. I, I think don't, it is. Uh, in that division, I, I wonder if the, the D-backs, and I liked what they did last year, loved it, embraced the chaos. But in that division, are they even going to make the playoffs? If the Giants bounce, pitchers bounce back, and that's the Dodgers the are what we think they're going to be. Yeah, and and that's the thing for me. And I like the Giants. You know, I think they're they're going to be better than most people think, as, as you mm-hmm. said. And to make the World Series, that means you have to go through L.A. You're going to have to go through Atlanta one way or another, or the Phillies. And I don't see them doing that. I don't no, either. no. And I think the Padres might be an interesting team mm-hmm. this season. Yeah, don't count them out. No. So it, we know they're going to play clean baseball, don't we? We know they're going to have that philosophy is if you aren't playing clean baseball, they'll play clean baseball long enough until you don't. And their top three are pretty good yeah. with the addition of Dylan Cease oh, now. Man. Yeah, Darvish, Musgrove, yeah. Cease. Pretty good. Yeah, really good. And, and they signed the uh, closer that Brooke wanted. The, the Japanese closer that Brooke wanted. Oh, um, who was the closer? I'm trying to remember now off the top of my head. I don't either. I don't remember either, so don't feel bad. <laughs> but then you, you still have Machado. You still have Bogarts. You still have uh, uh, Fernando Tatis Jr. Uh, you've still got ha Song Kim. Uh, you've got a lot of things. Cronenworth. Right? Yep. They've got a lot of nice elements on that team, and not the least of which is their manager, who does a really good job. He's really good. <laughs> yeah. He's really good. Mike Schultz. And yeah. they, he will have them cl- playing clean baseball. Yeah. There's no question about that. Yeah. So did you find it yet, Brooke? You still looking? No. Yuki Matsui signed with the Padres. Uh, I, yeah, I don't remember talking about. Uh, hold on here. This is great radio, by the way. Yeah, this is. Just, <laughs> <laughs> is he the, uh, I, I was like, I don't think he's signed with the Giants. No, with yeah, the have, Padres. Yeah, you have Matsui with the with the Padres, and that's, then, yeah, Matsui. But that's is that who I was talking about? Yeah. Okay, I don't remember specifically talking about him. I think I might have talked about him a yeah, little Yuki bit. Yuki Matsui. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There yep. you go. And then Robert Suarez is also in that bullpen. Do they still have our former guy? I don't think they do. The. Uh, the, uh, uh, number 66 for us from a couple of years ago. Came from the Yankees at the end of the season. Luis, was it Luis Garcia? Luis Garcia came oh, from the yeah. Yankees. He was nasty, and he is with the San Diego Padres. Okay, good. So now you know via radio. I'm he parlayed that into a nice deal with San Diego. Yeah, he did. It is Matsui. But I thought I remember talking a lot about Imanaga, which not a closer, but I did talk a lot about Imanaga. Yeah. So he goes against the Cardinals today. Ooh, well, that'll be fun to see. Yeah, Shoto. Shoto Imanaga. For and then you have Kyle Gibson the on the other side. Uh-huh. So let's see if Kyle can give us uh, six innings, three earned runs. So all we're looking for. All we're looking for, Gibby. Oh, Kyle. Sorry. Don't Not say Gibby. Gibby. Uh-oh. <laughs> You're going to upset some people. Coming up, rock and roll. An no hitter for Gibson. There's a new way to play in Missouri. If you want to get some entries in for a Pick'em contest, you can now with Underdog Fantasy's Pick'em Champions. You just pick two to five players from at least two different teams, select higher or lower on the player's stats, and once your entry money is picked, you are entered into a entry game alongside other underdogs, but don't worry about that. As long as you hit your entries, you're walking away with your payout. And how does that payout work? Well, between 2 and 5, you're going to go 3x, 6x, 10x, and then 20x. So no matter how, however many bets you have in your entry, that's going to determine your payout. And the best thing is they have things like scorchers, which are going to move those up and down depending on how much you like your entry and your stat projections. Yesterday, we had the Blues. We went with three different scorchers. Two of them hit 
That third one didn't, so although we would have been looking at a pretty big payout, we just barely missed, but hockey's not really my game, and that's why I'm happy in two days. Baseball finally starts, and that's right. You can get your entries in with the Cardinals on Underdog Fantasy. Just two more days until the Cardinals open up again. All your entries in, and the best part is in baseball, you can always be putting down your live entries. So if you got an entry in before the game, but things are changing up, the pace of the game has changed. It's in the fourth inning. You can always get another entry in live with Underdog Fantasy. Underdog, super easy to play and even easier to get started. You just go to their easy-to-use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com. Sign up with promo code ROCC, and Underdog will match your first deposit up to $100+. Plus, they'll give you a mystery special pick to use on your first pick of entry. You can take one of your entries from 6X to 10X or from 10X to 20X, just like that. That's Underdog Fantasy, promo code ROCC to get your first deposit of $10 or more up to $100 match, plus that special pick. Must be 18 plus and present in the state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concern with your play call. Whatever you're a gambler, visit www.ncgambling.org. Hey, if you want to work for a great St. Louis company, Hoffman Brothers is hiring HVAC professionals, and there are some incredible benefits to working for Hoffman Brothers. Free health and dental and vision insurance to you and your family, top pay in the industry, plus paid vacation up to 20 days, eight paid holidays a year, and they have an annual tool credit, a company paid iPad provided to field techs, and you can come in and work for Hoffman Brothers, your American standard heating and air conditioning dealer. All you need to do is go to Hoffman Bros, H-O-F-F-M-A-N-N, Hoffman Bros. Com. And here we are. We're at the end of March, and we're getting close to the warm season here in St. Louis. I would love to have you get in touch with Hoffman Brothers at HoffmanBros.com and set up an appointment to get your air conditioner looked at because you don't want to have it be 120 degrees in St. Louis and have your air conditioning go out during the summer. They'll make sure that your air conditioner is good to go for the summer months. They'll take care of all of the filters that you need. And the other thing they're, they're going to do for you at Hoffman Brothers is tell you how much life you have left in that air conditioner if, indeed, it might be 20 years old or older. Get in touch with Hoffman Brothers. Set that appointment today at HoffmanBros.com.
a rock! In end roll. Let's rock, let's rock today. Eddie Rocchio, ready to rock and roll here on 101 ESPN. Eddie, what do you got for us? Something cool? Something Sorry. exciting? No worries. <laughs> He's building up the tension right now. No, right? I, was, I was double checking because <laughs> we have a read to do today. I don't think we've done it yet. Oh, okay. That was the main thing I was double checking first. So, but, oh, well, well, we need to do that. While we get on that, oh, uh, do you need? Do you, I, I just want to throw out. Um, we already talked about the new kickoff rule for the NFL, but there are some other rules that are coming down from the NFL. The hip drop tackle has been banned. Uh, you saw that late last night that it was pretty much all but guaranteed. There were a lot of NFL fans who were, or I, I shouldn't say NFL fans. When I say NFL fans, I mean current and former NFL players who took to Twitter and X because they were quite uh, miffed about the hip drop tackle being made illegal. But some other news, by the way, is the NFL is also moving the trade line de deadline back a week, and they're also making a replay reviewable to see if the game clock expired before the ball was snapped and if a quarterback was down or out of bounds when he threw the ball. So we I, get more replay review. I like them all. I like them all. Pretty Do you obvious. you like the hip drop tackle? Oh, yeah. I, I think outlawing the hip drop tackle is... It, 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 you hurt players when you have when you use that. The Baltimore tight end can. Yeah, Mark uh, Andrews. Yeah, Mark Andrews can attest to that. Kerry so. Davis had it happen to him. He was telling us on Friday that uh, he thought he got one and he thought he had broken his ankle exactly. as he walked off the field. I think it is it is important to say though that the Logan Wilson tackle on Mark Andrews was actually not used in the video the NFL um, gave of this is what's dangerous. And in fact, the NFL came out and said that. The mark that the uh, Wilson tackle on Andrews would actually not be flaggable with these new rules. That I, I guess it's not egregious the way that he drops his his weight to get Andrews down in that play, and I think it's egregious, outrageous, preposterous. <laughs> there you go. And so it is a little odd that one of the first plays that people went to to use as an example as fans of just remembering hip drop tackles from this season was not used by the NFL, and again, still apparently would not be a flaggable play. I usually don't give fantasy advice, and maybe this is just me being a Titans fan and being biased in that way. But now Derrick Henry, obviously moving on with the Ravens, take him when you're in your fantasy team because now that this hip drop hip drop tackle is banned how in the world are people going to stop him how derrick henry he's already hard to stop but then you have this being banned yeah that was the know. only way you could get him better get in front of him <laughs> yep and good luck you yeah. want to get in front of derrick henry well somebody's got to <laughs> good luck with that one <laughs> Yeah. Hey, uh, baseball starting up on Thursday and a week from Thursday. We've got the home opener here on uh, here on 101 ESPN. We're going to be out at Ballpark Village broadcasting live from the Budweiser Brew House inside Ballpark Village. And the home opener is almost here. And we're going to be set up just steps away from the ballpark. And you can visit us. The opening drive, BK and Ferrario and the fast lane all coming to you live next Thursday, April 4th from Ballpark Village. Our opening day broadcast is brought to you by Holiday World and Splash. Flash and Safari, and by Budweiser. There you go, Randy. And there's a perfect way to break up this these little rules segment I have going here because it's not just the NFL that's going to have a new rule implemented the next time you see them play because the ref strike in the MLS is over. They officially came to a CBA earlier today. And the reason why that's interesting is because that actually starts a change in the MLS because they had new rules that were agreed to back in December, but they weren't going to implement the new rules until the refs that you're obviously traded, uh, you know, trained and paying are actually going to be suited up and doing the refereeing. So the referees will be back this weekend on March 30th for the games. And that means that there's a new rule. We talked about this yesterday. How do you get rid of some of the chicanery or BS that St. Louis City had to deal with against DC United this past weekend. Well, there's now a rule that if a player is down for 15 seconds with an injury, he has to leave the field of play for two minutes before he can return back. So you're going to basically going to get a man down for two minutes if a guy is injured for not for longer than 15 seconds down on the ground. Obviously, this rule will not <laughs> uh, come into play with certain injuries like egregious head injuries, certain goalkeeper injuries, things like that. This rule will not pertain, but but definitely a rule that uh, City would have liked to be in effect just a week prior. Thank you, because that was just absolutely annoying to watch this past weekend. Have the referees been that bad? Yeah. I mean, with the replacement referees, Rock, have they 
Have they been that bad to where they're they're costing people games? Yeah, two weeks ago, uh, or I, yeah, Monday. Uh, two weeks ago on Monday was the first time we really saw play, uh fans, players, I should say, and coaches go, going a little bit too far for the MLS's comfort level and and making comments about the the referees. There were some fines that were levied uh, because they made some comments about the refereeing. So yeah, it was starting to break a little bit. Uh, and this past weekend, obviously here in St. Louis, we saw a much more stark example. The fans got involved. Pretty much, I think every fan group by last weekend had had at least had one chant go off about how they needed to pay the refs because the replacement refs weren't doing a good enough job. And a number of players talked about how their their inability to control the game and things like that was apparent. You heard that from Roman. Berkey so it definitely affected things and I think City got affected this past weekend if this rule was in effect it's a completely different second half against DC yeah. well, I brought this up yesterday but there have been more overturned calls using VAR per match so far this season than in 2023 Mm. So that is another issue that you've dealt with because of this whole situation. So I'm glad it's over with because you're having more eyes on the MLS right now. When you have star power coming over like Messi and things like that, you need to make it look right and get the calls right. Right. No doubt about it. By the way, I hate when uh, league's doing this, but City's game this weekend is at RSL, who they played for the very first game of the year. Real Salt Lake. So, no, Real. Oh. Real. We're, we're, we're going with real over here. Yeah. So they, they drew them to start the season, so hopefully they uh, can get a win actually away, which is rare for them, but nonetheless, I'm tired of the draws, as Danny said to start off the show. Yeah. Keep it no more real. draws. I'm tired of the draws. I am too. I want to see winners. I want to see losers. <laughs> no ties. Period. <laughs> winners and losers. All right. <laughs> That's why you, you play the game. Uh, to be play to win the game. Exactly. Right. Uh, great job today by our producer and audio and video engineer, the one, the only, Matthew Rocchio. Pleasure. Uh, Brooke, did you have fun today? I did. Good deal. Danny, great job as always. Pleasure. That's a great Dan McLaughlin. And we thank you for tuning in, texting in, and being a part of this program. We've got a balloon party with T-Mac and Ajax coming up, followed by BK and Ferrario, and then the fast lane for all of us until tomorrow morning at 7. Have a wonderful Taco Tuesday, St. Louis. That's right.